This podcast is brought to you in part by PNP Games, your online source for everything video games. Visit their website at pnpgames.com or at their two retail locations in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Let's get started. everybody and welcome to the bonus stage podcast episode number 32 as always i'm your host lloyd hannison we're recording this on not the date that's in the show notes it's friday may 24th um, <laughs> that really confused me for a second i'm like but i thought it was my birthday tomorrow and then i was like oh wait yes it, indeed Too it is wah, wah. oh yeah you're you're 25 or two yeah our birthdays are a month apart a month apart exactly a one month apart. that's awesome well uh you can hear his voice joining me this week jeff ward jeff how the hell are you doing my friend Oh, my God. I'm so tired. Uh, I have been just completely bogged down with work. Uh, So it's been a very, like, quite frankly, I thought yesterday was Tuesday. Like, things have gone so fast this week um, that it's just, like, it's all just flown by. But, um, yeah, it's been a good week, though. You know, like, you can't ever complain about being busy, or at least I certainly won't be complaining about being busy. So I haven't really had that much time to play games uh, but the ones I have been playing, I've just been diving into, like, headfirst <laughs> all the way. Well, that's good. That's a good thing. <clears throat> yeah. It is. Being busy is being – Jeff, you're, you're young. Being busy is a good thing. Yes. Relish it. Especially when you, Enjoy especially it. When you work for yourself too, right? Like, yeah. you never want to – oh, well, well, you know, this week has just <laughs> been slow. Those are like the scary weeks, you know? <laughs> if I'm playing a ton of video games, that's that's kind of a bad week, you know, yeah. unless I'm having a lot of meetings as well too. It, it's kind of like old arcades. When when you're sitting there playing video games, it's costing you a quarter um, every every few minutes um, because exactly. you're, not, you're not doing work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, let's get uh, let's get into the show. Um, don't don't really have any announcements this week. I just wanted to uh, say thanks again to the fine folks over at pnpgames.com. Um, we had their ads in last week episode, and now we have it uh, for this one. They're supporting the show, bringing us the live stream. You can see if you're at vgpodcast.com slash live, you get to see the nice little PNP Games banner. Um, they're helping support us, um, and we're helping support them by uh, hopefully bringing a lot of you guys over to their website. So do check it out. Go to our website, uh, um, vgpodcast.com, and click the PNP Games banner. It'll take you right over there. Um, check it out. They have um, sales. They have current games. They have used games. They have stuff from all the way back at the Atari 2600, all the way up mm-hmm. to stuff that just came out like today on the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. Um, they're your source for everything video game. Check them out, pnpgames.com. Yeah, not only are they sponsoring the show, but they're also going to be sponsoring quite a few reviews in the coming weeks as well, too. So yeah. that's also a very big help to the show, and we definitely appreciate their, their support. <clears throat> uh, so if you guys like the show, you know, and you're interested in buying games buy them from them, you know, so that the, it's cyclical, you know, it's got a, it's like a snake eating its own tail kind of thing. That's what we're trying to do here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're promoting, I'm, I'm very tired. We're promoting amphibian uh, cannibalism here on yeah. the bonus stage. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Cargo than Jabber Mies. He has no interest in video games. I don't know what he's doing. He just here. randomly turns on his computer and it's on yeah. this page. He's like, I don't know what this noise box <laughs> is doing with the noise and the yeah. talking and the gaming. I don't get it. He says he and just it, likes angriness. And oh, quite frankly, that's what it sir, is. you're gonna get a lot of it later on in the show, I'm sure. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be an angry episode. Oh, it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be so good. I'm so uh, you know what? <clears throat> quite frankly, I um I love shows where where we've got so much stuff that pisses us off to talk about, you know? Like I almost wish that just for the selfish selfish purpose of the show that every week some really <laughs> stupid bad stuff happened, you know? You know, I I, I love loving things. I'm like Jeff Canada. <laughs> I, I love to love things. Um 
but I I can't I can't love what just transpired this week. Um, but we'll get to that later in the show. Um, yeah, I guess I guess we should get it started, man. Uh, Jeff, yeah. what what the heck you been playing lately? Uh, so uh, again, th- this week haven't had a lot of time to play video games, but the ones I've been playing, uh, I've just you know jumped in head first. Um, over the course of the weekend, uh, actually, as soon as we finished the show last week, I went upstairs and just popped on Dust Five One Four again, <clears> PS <throat> Three. Mm-hmm. I am, and there's going to be a review of this uh, game later on in the show today. By the way, um, I'm really, really into this game. I, I it's really a stupid friggin' game too. Like, I, I can't even really, <laughs> like, in the review, I will tell you in detail. But quite frankly, it's a stupid game, you know. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, it's you know, it's, I've I've gotten addicted to it. You know, I like the fact that it's free first of all, mm-hmm. and it's actually a pretty well made game for it being free. There are some problems, but nothing that that's going to keep me from uh, from not playing it. <laughs> yeah. Um and. And although it does seem like you really have to grind like crazy to get the good stuff, you're not totally left defenseless with having the bad stuff. So I've been playing that a lot during the weekend. Sure. Um, And uh, and then I went and picked up uh, Metro Last Light from PNP, and I've been playing that periodically during the week. I had a nice four-hour session while I was rendering a video on my computer this morning playing that. and the review of that will be up next week. I haven't had a chance to finish the game yet, so I, I definitely want to uh, get more into that game before I kind of come to a real solid uh, review state. However, at this point, the game's fantastic. There's very little wrong with it. There are some things that are strange and uh, some weird bugs. I was actually, there was a part of the game where, you know, you, you there's like a rail station And you walk out and there's like a woman, a red haired woman in like a leather jacket and jeans crying about something. And she, you know, there's some lines. And then this rail car comes by and the same woman, the same character model is riding on it. And she just passes (laughs) your field of view. I'm like, what the hell was that? And then I walk around the corner and there's the same woman sleeping on a bed. Wow. Like within like 30 seconds, I saw three of the same character models. I thought that was hilarious. (laughs) It's like playing a sports game from like three, four, (laughs) five years ago where you'd see the same animation. It's like. Yeah. You know, or or any sports game today where you just look into the stands and see fans, you know, and it's like the same three people. (laughs) That's exactly what I was saying. Like it's just the the one dude in the background going like punching. Yeah. He does that forever. And it's like nothing's happening. And we're just, it's like a rain delay and the guy is still punched in the air. You know, and it's like, as, wow, as good as that games, is so boring. As good as game, uh, sports games have gotten <clears throat> in the last decade, mm-hmm. that's something they've never fixed. And I don't think they give a damn about it either. Like, oh, no, it's I mean, just it's in not, every game. It doesn't make the game better. <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, but, you know, when you do like instant replays and stuff and like a lot of games now, like the broadcast mode and MLB The Show will have instant replay put mm-hmm. in. Yep. And like they're positioning the camera and you still see like the same – there were one time there was three people that were exactly the same sitting next to each other in the stands. And I was like, oh, this is – that's so stupid, but <laughs> that's whatever. Awesome. Um, so I've been really digging Metro Last Light. Uh, I think it's actually a lot better than the first game as well too. Um, it's so certainly as difficult mm-hmm. um, but but not in a punishing way. Uh, you don't really need to play the first game to appreciate this one because in the first few minutes of the game, they actually go through the entire story in a very nice Reader's Digest version Mm -hmm. in the opening cinematic. So that's really nice. Um, So I'll be playing that (laughs) game over the course of uh, the weekend and uh, and I'll have a review of that out, uh, I guess, one week today. And the last thing I'm playing is um, a game on the iOS. It's called Base Jumper. I love games like this where all you actually need is your finger. You know, you could be uh, like a, a nine times amputee on your hands, right? All you need is one finger to play this game. That's and that's fantastic. And it's a very simple game. You tap the guy runs back. You tap again to get him to you know build up speed, and then you tap again for him to jump. And then when you get to like there's like this little spot on the ground that you have to hit. You get close enough to the ground. You tap it again, and he opens up a shoot and you have to try to get to as close as the center point as possible. Um, I really like the game. It's free. Can't really complain about a free game. And uh, I think for me, I never really want to play like some engrossing game on the iOS. I like games that you just need your one finger, you know, swiping or tapping. That's all I care about for iOS games. So have you played this game by the way? I have not. You have not? It's pretty cool. I mean, I, you have a ton of stuff to play on iOS, but uh, it's mm-hmm. uh, it, it's a fun game. I also I'm, I just really like games where you have to jump off of tall buildings. 
You know, I do that all the time. Jeff, like, do, do we need to have a little counseling session? Do I need to, <laughs> do we need to, to, to go over some problems to, to get, uh, walk a, you back from the edge? I love heights. I love vertigo. Okay. I was filming today in a, in, in the office building or not the Richardson building, but that, that blue glass building downtown on Wednesday. And we were up on like the 18th floor and you could see all the way down to the street. And I was like, man, that's just, I love that sensation. Yeah. You know, skydiving when I was 18, that was fantastic. So anytime there's like a part in the video game where you could just jump off a high cliff, I'll save it, jump, see what happens. <laughs> I just, I don't know. It's just stupid. I like that kind of stuff. So nice. base jumper on the iOS is the, the other thing. The last thing I've been playing this week. Uh, what about you? Cool. Um, I've been playing a little bit. I've been, um, picking up some old games. Like I'm, I'm waiting for some new stuff to come out. Um, so I, I bought, um, Deus Ex Human Revolution on the PlayStation three a while ago for a really stupid sale. Um, so I've been making my way through that and it's, it's a really, really good game. It's, um, it's not exactly what I expected. There's a lot more talking with random people that don't seem like they're quest givers um, and stuff like that. A lot of side quests and things, a lot of weird achievements. <clears throat> like I I basically um, was going through this quest line and I was getting tired with the, the woman that was talking to me. Um, and I ended up like shooting her in the head and I got an achievement <laughs> for it because I completed the quest. It's just like, oh, well, I killed her, but I get that. Hmm. All right. <laughs> it was really, really weird. But I'm really digging it, though. Um, also, the, the achievement wasn't for shooting her in the head. No, it, it was just, just for that was an ending for to that yeah for completing that quest line. And I guess gotcha. that was a valid end state for the quest line: shooting her and killing her. It's like, all right, that's odd. Um, so yeah, I've been playing through that and having a lot of fun. I guess I'm about halfway through or so. It feels that way anyway. Um, so I still got a little bit more gameplay on that. It seems like it's going to be a longer game. I thought it would be like six to eight hours, and it seems like it's more like the eight to 16 hour uh, type game. So I'm um, getting a lot of play out of that. Um, also been playing some stuff on my um, iPad. Uh, I picked up uh, Poker Night 2, and that's the Telltale Games um, poker game. Uh, game that came out on the PlayStation 3, Vita, and I believe PC, and it stars a whole bunch of different characters. There's um, uh, there's Claptrap. I'm trying to think of the, the big guy, Brock. I can't remember what he's from. Venture Brothers. Um, there's Claptrap from Borderlands. There's um, Ash from the Evil Dead series, um, and there is uh, Sam from Sam and Max. Uh, and then the poker is actually being um, the hands and everything and all, all the communication between the rounds is actually Gladys from Portal. And oh, then cool. and then there's other there's other characters that come by and stuff like that. There's um, uh, Mad Moxie runs the bar. So she's always leaning over the bar and 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 talking to people as they get kicked out. And it's just it's a fun game. Um, the reason why I picked it up on iOS is because it's fifteen dollars everywhere else. And then I saw that it dropped on iOS for five bucks. It's like. I will pay five dollars for this, and fifteen bucks is a lot to ask on 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 any app store. Yeah, I mean it's a poker it's a poker game. Um, it's it's fifteen dollars on PlayStation Network and PC on Steam. That's normal price for that type of stuff for a game. Um, you buy lots of stuff on Xbox Live Arcade for fifteen dollars. It's that that type of thing. But then yeah. it but then it dropped on iOS for five bucks, which is why I jumped at it's it. It's a good point. You know, I always feel like because I'm playing it on the <laughs> Xbox that it's worth more, even though that real I mean that's apples and oranges really. There's a lot of iOS games that are way better for a smaller price than mm -hmm. anything you could buy for fifteen bucks or even five bucks on the Xbox Live Arcade. Yep, yep. So I picked it up five bucks. Good game. Um, the one thing uh, when you play it on your PlayStation Three. I believe um, maybe it does it on here as well. But um, when you uh, when you beat a round, you get tokens and you can use those tokens to buy uh, different poker table vel um, velvets, different cards, different chips. Um, and they're themed. So if you unlock all three of the one theme, uh, it actually changes the room to be that um, that thing. So if you unlock the Borderlands velvet and, and chips and cards, it, it actually turns the room that you're playing into kind of like a Borderlands looking thing. Uh, apparently when you do this on the PlayStation 3, it unlocks a bunch of Borderlands content um, in Borderlands 2. So you get a bunch of different heads and things like that. Um, I don't know if maybe it does it on iOS. I haven't gotten that far yet. So maybe it'll unlock that stuff as well. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's I mean, it's a neat thing. I, I love the fact that it has a whole bunch of characters from different different mediums. Like there's um, that there's a c cartoon character and a video game character and a movie character. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's just interesting. So um, check it out. If you're, if you're into poker, it's uh, Texas Hold'em and it's fun. 
And you can also get like the Poker <clears throat> Stars app for free. I'm sure, but it, then it doesn't have um, Claptrap making stupid things and Glados calling you an idiot for making a mistake. So it's there's, true. there's different. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, a lot of the AI is really uh, kind of stupid, where they'll go all in with like a, a two and a five. Um, with, and it's just like it's like okay like, I understand bluffing but that's just that's just being dumb computers um, shouldn't be able to bluff doesn't that seem really strange you know like either there's like a bluffing system programmed into it but bluffing is like is really like, like kind of almost an emotional state it's just yeah well, they're trying to they're trying to simulate that they're trying to simulate yeah. the, the the characteristics of a person right so know, there's some there's some deep blue Gary Kasparov stuff going on in there that's what <laughs> Yeah, it's too it, too strange for me. Exactly. So anyway, it's it's a lot of fun. So I've been I've been playing that. I um, also picked up another iOS game that I've been diving into, and it's called Zombie Fish Tank. And you are a zombie fish, and you have to eat smaller fish to grow bigger. And then you can eat the bigger fish, which you couldn't eat before, but they could eat you. But when you get big enough, you can eat them. And then when you get big enough to eat all the fish in the tank, you go into rage mode and you eat all the fish. And then you get tokens and you can buy upgrades and you can it's just it's a stupid, stupid game, but I'm super addicted to it. It's like a Chilingo game, uh, but it is a lot, a lot of fun. So um, if you have an iOS um, device like an iPad or an iPhone, uh, just do a search on the App Store for jo- Zombie Fish Tank and check it out. It's actually a lot of fun um, for as far as iOS games go. Mr. <sighs> Mr. Texting while we're, while we're talking, I can see you on camera, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have important business to conduct. Oh, uh, you're sure. talking about a zombie fish game. Yeah, it, which is better than MLB the Show. No, oh, okay. It is. Okay. It is. Let's let's not get. There's proof of that. There's don't, proof of that. Let's not say stuff you can't take back here, Lloyd. I, mean, uh, I, I don't want to take gone it back. Way too far now. <laughs> way too far. And I quite quite frankly, I'm offended. I'm offended as a person. Oh, oh, I'm I I feel bad about offending your love no, you of don't. the game. No, you no, don't. No, I don't at all. <laughs> all right, let's get into the rest of the show. Let's get into new yeah. releases. So, um, yeah, some decent games coming out this week. Yeah, a couple of them anyway. <clears throat> yeah, um, a couple of pretty bad ones too. I'm sure. Sure. So the first one coming out, uh, this is actually something I've been looking forward to. Uh, Call of Juarez Gunslinger. This is an Xbox Live Arcade game. It's also on the PSN. You can also pick it up on the PC. Um, I liked the first Call of Juarez game. It was okay. It wasn't a great game, but it certainly wasn't a bad game. It had some serious problems with it that kind of kept it from being like a gun <laughs> or a, I mean, it's it's nowhere near Red Dead Redemption. Um, but you know, I'm kind of a mark for games set in the old West. Mm-hmm. I, I love that stuff. I'm a big, big fan of that uh, genre. So this game came out uh, on Tuesday. I have the demo downloaded on my Xbox. I haven't got a chance to play it yet, so I'm gonna I'm gonna play that demo and see how it feels. But it's 15 bucks, so. Again, uh, you know, you're kind of your standard baseline price at 1,200 points uh, on the Xbox Live Arcade. So it'll be like 14.99 on every other platform. Uh, I think you mm-hmm. can get it through Steam, I believe. Right. Um, so that's that came out. Um, but this is a pretty big one that I think a lot of people are, are waiting for. Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D on the 3DS. Um, mm-hmm. Have you picked this one up yet, uh, yet Lloyd? Uh, no, it came out today. Um it was released today. I haven't had a chance to pick it up. Um, I own the Wii version of this game. Um, mm-hmm. The 3DS version, they don't really add much. They add a new mode to make it kind of easier to play. Um, mm-hmm. They add a couple other um, levels that aren't on the other game, but it's essentially a remake of a remake kind of Um I mean, not that Donkey Kong Country Returns was a remake, but it had a lot of kind of the similar levels as like the old Donkey Kong Country game. So um, yeah. it's it's on it's basically on my my list. I don't know if it's something that I will be uh, picking up and playing, but yeah, um, you've already played it, right? Yeah, it, it might be there if I'm bored one day and I want something else to play. Um, I, Is I will it a good it game? Like, oh, yeah, like, it's, like, it's a yeah. it's a fantastic game. Um, it's a lot of fun. Like I played it like crazy on the Wii um, and it's definitely worth um, worth playing so um, I, I love i love donkey kong country so you know this seems like it'd be a good platform to play it yeah on. and it's 35 bucks so it's it's not super expensive if you're buying it new cool uh another one that came out is a uh diablo style game it's called the incredible adventures of van helsing I looked at the trailer today it was bored out of my friggin' mind uh the gameplay looks just boring i you know i hate games where it's like you just click on bad guys and then your character goes and does stuff i don't feel like i'm interacting with the game although i understand that 
any other game, you're still just pressing buttons. But I do feel like there's a little bit more of an immersion if I'm in control of that character's movements uh, in, a, in a different way. So this isn't a game for me, but if you're like jonesing for some kind of Diablo-esque game, uh, there is this uh, this entry into that uh, into that genre that's mm-hmm. that's come out. Again, it doesn't look very good at all. It looks really stupid. You wear a funny hat in this. It's just stupid. <laughs> um, I, I'm a bit. I, I can't stand funny hats in games. Get them out of there. Uh, <laughs> Resident Evil Revelations that also is came out. Such the, uh, that's the weirdest <laughs> like hill to die on that I've ever heard before, Jeff. That is like so bizarre. I'm not playing games until there's no more. F- Damn funny hats and video games. I, just, well, I'm not going to be a part of that. I'm not going to be a part of that scene. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if we did like, uh, you know, wow. like some sort of montage of all the crazy shit that we'd say, <laughs> it would it would just be mind boggling. Oh my God. Uh, my head hurts. All right. Let's, let's <laughs> Resident Evil going. Revelations is the console <laughs> port of the 3DS game that came out mm-hmm. uh, last year. Uh, it's on the Xbox 360, the PS3, the PC, and the Wii U, which is, uh, I guess, pretty nice for you Wii U owners out there. Although, I'm going to assume that a lot of people who own a Wii U probably already own a 3DS, so I'm not quite sure what kind of crossover there is there. Um, but I played the demo. It's fun. Uh, it's a Resident Evil game. I think it's it's it was created in the vein of, of having a little bit more of an older style. you got to get keys that have emblems on them and unlocking doors and little puzzles and backtracking and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, It looks pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get the full version of it or, you know, go and buy it. I'm a little bit burnt out on Resident Evil after Resident Evil 6. Um, But uh, it'll be there for for me when I decide I want to play it at some point. Um, And the last one this week is the Fast... Sorry, it's not the Fast and Furious. It's... Fast and Furious Showdown, and that is on the PC, the Xbox 360, the PS3, the 3DS, and the Wii U. So this is going to be some sort of... um, Um, Absolutely everything. Yeah, I I, I can't believe it's not on iOS. It it probably has to be somewhere. There's a Fast and Furious game that hit um, iOS uh, two weeks ago. Uh, It's not Fast and Furious Showdown, but it is a different Fast and Furious game. Gotcha, gotcha. So, uh, so that has come out, and it's going to be your movie tie-in game. I don't know anything about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, c- I couldn't find a video of it, but I'm going to assume it's some sort of drag racing, uh, action car racing kind of game. Yeah. It might be okay, but frankly, there are a lot of better ones that don't have that license attached to it that you can play. Sure enough. So that's that's it for this uh, this week's new releases. Um, not right. a bunch of great stuff, but enough that this well, week wasn't well, a total wash. Well, I mean, Donkey Kong Country Returns is kind of one of Nintendo's huge titles making a making an appearance. That's pretty good. And yeah. Call of Juarez, I mean, I, I like the game. Um but uh yeah, I don't know. This fifteen dollars, like what what exactly is this game? Like is it is it something that's gonna take you three hours to beat? I, I don't I don't I don't get it. I'm 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 curious. Yeah. I, I wanna know more, so I'm definitely gonna go check into that a little bit after after the show, I think. Yeah, the, the demo's out there for you to for you to try. And um, Jake Hargooth was saying that if you buy it on Steam, they actually give you uh, another Juarez game for free. So it might be the original. They did like a a weird like modern day Call of Juarez where it was like a drug smuggling game like a year ago or two years ago or something. Uh, Very strange. Yeah, I seem to remember that coming out and being confused. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? what is this? How is this tied in with the thing? Yeah, the, the cartel. That's right. Yeah, it was just bizarre 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 all right cool well uh with that let's uh let's take a small break cool uh in the pre-show i was um playing some of the um daft punk album uh and obviously not on camera and not recorded so all the raa can go away i'm not uh not stealing stuff here but um today i found something on youtube there's a a, uh, i I guess an artist called joe jeremiah and he puts together 8-bit um music videos of and and just like compilations of different songs and he did one on daft punk which is the whole album of daft punk done in 8-bit it's five minutes long so i'm not going to play the whole thing but i thought i'd play a couple minutes of that just to kind of tie in with the pre-show so so here we go this is um this is uh 8-bit of daft punk see you guys in a couple minutes
right. So there you go. There was a couple minutes of that. Um, I really like good. it. Yeah, it's really yeah, it's good. Great. I hope you makes the video or the uh, the song available to download somewhere because uh, I'd love to have that in my uh, in my uh, iTunes because it is. Yeah, uh, you know, like I would good. say just like download it off of YouTube, but you always get some shit compression after you download to mp3 off like be like rip the file off yeah well i did great. that i put it to the 1080p stream and i did the the stream rip and i just yeah. did like an audio hijack but I, I like to support this guy he puts a lot of work into his stuff so i wouldn't mind paying it like 99 cents for the track or whatever um, sure but uh but yeah it's pretty cool um yes yeah, so check it out i'll post a link to uh to the the eight bits of daft punk in the show notes if you guys want to check it out yourself all right, man. So you're cool. gonna you want to talk about dust? I've been playing a little bit of dust as well. Yeah, I figure we we both talk about it a little bit. Sure. Uh, you know, hard to make this like a. I mean, it's it's a review of a game that's free, which I feel is kind of silly in itself because well, it's a I even feel, worse. It's a review of an MMO that is constantly in a state of flux. So <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, not really a review. We're just gonna talk a little bit about. Yeah, it. we're gonna talk about it more. Really, um, I like it. I, I, I think it's a fun game. There are some things wrong with it, uh, which we'll get into. But if you don't know what Dust is, if you didn't listen to the show last week, it mm-hmm. is a first-person MMO set in the EVE Online universe. Mm-hmm. Battles take place in real time um, on planets that are in that universe. You play as mercenary characters uh, in different factions, which doesn't really factor into it all that much if you're just playing to shoot guys in the face. Um, but the more you ally yourself with certain people who will play the MMO um, EVE Online, then those backgrounds and kind of specializations do play a little bit more into the factor mm-hmm. of the game. Um, you just shoot guys. Man. Like, you just That's all you do is you, you hop into a game, uh, you get to uh, completely customize your loadout, and you get to customize your your suit and the the functions it has how how quickly the armor regenerates how strong the armor is all that kind of stuff different powers Um, different different sub powers like there's lots of stuff you can do oh yeah i mean they definitely because the game is free to play they want you to spend real money to play it Mm -hmm. um and they definitely do a pretty good job of of trying to get you to do that because of how many i mean there's got to be a thousand different specialization trees when you go into like every weapon has like 19 and it's just it's ludicrous um but because of that i kind of get addicted to kind of planning out how my stuff works you know like Mm. i feel like oh, you know, I, I've been really getting killed quickly lately, like in the last few matches. Maybe I want to put more points into this and I'll, you know, spend a couple of games building up enough credits and enough uh, points, uh, you know, experience points to kind of throw into this specialization. And it kind of works, you know, like, again, for a free game, I'll never put a cent of real money into this game, but they're like, <laughs> Lloyd, you were telling me, there are a lot of people who have. Well, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I was telling Jeff kind of my first experience with this, and I was like, "All right, okay, cool. I'm in this armor, and I look cool, and I got this this machine gun that was, I guess, a bonus because I had PlayStation Plus way back in the day, and loaded it up and jumped out, and it's like, great, this is gonna be awesome. I come around a corner and I see a, a red blip, so the enemy's there. <laughs> he comes around a corner and he shoots me once. I like, I, I heard oh, one yeah. bullet. And I was dead. And it's like, what the hell was that? So I'm yeah. like, okay, that's interesting. So I respawn and it takes 10, 15 seconds, whatever. I respawn. I come around a corner and a guy standing, hacking something. So his 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 back is turned to me and he's like focused on hacking something. Mm-hmm. So I go behind him and I empty a whole clip into his back, reload, which takes forever, and start emptying another clip into his back. He finally turns around, shoots me twice, and I'm dead. I was like, yeah. what the hell is this all about? So yeah. I, I was basically not going and engaging people anymore. I was kind of taking pot shots and hiding because obviously everybody that I was playing against had all these crazy high powered weapons and crazy high powered stats and had had moved their tree along um, where I was just a newbie. Um, so I can definitely see a lot of people getting really, really frustrated um, really, really easily just because they come into the game and boom, you're dead, boom, you're dead, boom, you're dead. It's like, all right, that was fun. That was worth the <laughs> two hour patching that I had to go through to get into the game. Yeah. So there, there is a big uh, part of the, of the game that, uh, that really kind of sucks all the fun out of it is that anytime <laughs> there's a patch, 
I mean, great. You, you have to download it, which is, which is fair, mm -hmm. but these patches are big. They're huge friggin' patches. I mean, the first one that you had to download was 1.3 gigabytes Yeah, and, and it I'm, took me like two hours to download the damn thing. And I'm sure that future patches will be smaller because they can just patch the little files. This is the patch yeah. of the, of the beta uh, client. So yeah. for what Sony does, which is stupid is when you download a game, like if I go to the, to the PSN shop right now and I buy, I don't know, name a game, Sly Cooper. Um, and I download it. it. I download it today, but it's the image of the actual retail release. So if there's been a series of patches that have come out since then, the first time that I start the game, I have to then go and download those patches. And that's what this game was. You download Dust. The client is like two gigs or whatever. But mm -hmm. that's the beta client because that's the only one that they've been that they put up. Then you have to actually go and download all of the client patches. So future client patches won't be that big. But it's just like, well, start bundling that stuff into the thing. Like make people do it so they can do it overnight, and they're not sitting there watching a progress bar get up to twenty percent and then drop down to zero, and then get up to five percent and drop down to zero. And it was like doing this weird thing when it was patching the client. And it's just like, okay, this this is not fun at all. Um, but yeah, the game itself, it, it's enjoyable. The world is neat. The fact that you can get contracts and you can issue your own contracts and, and call in airstrikes from your buddies and that's all cool. Yeah. But to me, yeah. it's one of those games where you can pay your, your way to winning and I'm not willing to do that in this game. So I always find or I always think that I'm just not going to have fun in the game. Yeah, there, there certainly is a trade-off, right? You kind of have to make the call and be like, I, the game is free, so I could, if I really like it, I could spend $60, which would be the, the cost of the game, putting stats into something I could gain otherwise for free if I wanted to play this game for like seven straight weeks. You know what I mean? You really have to grind a lot to get enough points to really kind of fill out your stats. So you either say, I want to play it for free and it'll be frustrating but it's it's a good game, so I'll keep playing it. But I'm gonna get I'm gonna die a lot. It's not gonna be a great experience some of the time. Or you dump a ton of money into a game that's free, mm -hmm. so you end up effectively breaking even or paying more than an, than it's ever worth. And you have more fun with the game because you're stronger and you have better weapons. <clears throat> right. It's certainly a decision that is kind of shitty to make. I mean, quite frankly, it's just it's not really a good position to be in. I'm not going to put a cent into this game. I'm having enough fun with it, but I've encountered the same stuff you have where some guy's armor rating is just through the roof and my bullet penetration and damage on my assault rifle is just good enough to kind of let him know that I'm there. You know, like I'm scratching his back for him basically. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've run into some people like that. Um, is, although I've gotten into a lot of lobbies where it's just a lot of new players, which is also great. Mm -hmm. um, I really love it when a player on my team will call in enemy, or sorry, uh, will call in air support. So they will call in, they're like, I've got a friend who plays EVE Online. They're like, can you send me down some reinforcements? And a big ship will come down on the planet and land, and or not land, but it'll like drop a jeep or drop some, you know, some resupply stuff. That That's really cool. I like the fact that I'm playing a really small part of a massive game. That feels cool to me. Um, but it's kind of hard to notice most of the time when you're just running around shooting people and, and, uh, the running part, I get stuck on so much crap in this game. Like, you know, I'm one millimeter too far and like I'm stuck on a wall or like, you know, I, I, I get stuck on like a stupid bump and I can't move, you know, or yeah. it, like stops your sprint and my God, that stuff's annoying. I feel like your character moves like a tank. And again, I said this last week, I'm not a fan of the PS3 controller. I think it's garbage. And I think the thumbsticks have a lot to do with how I play that game. And I just, I've never enjoyed that controller. Sure. So it's harder for me to, I think, do well. Xbox controller, I you know, if I could use that, um, I think I'd be a lot more better off. I'm not sure if it's really the game's fault or I'm just my inexperience with the controller, but that really bugs me. You were having some problems with your Jeep, right? Just yeah. getting stuck on the tiniest rock. Yeah, it was funny. I I was uh, get, got into a vehicle, um, was driving through the 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 world, and saw this little tiny rock. Like it was probably the size of like a soccer ball. Your tires are huge. It's like you're driving a warthog around the the, the world. I drive over this rock, and next thing you know, m my my Jeep is kind of kind of skewed to one side so i can't move i can i can, can backwards forwards nothing's working i get out of, of the jeep and i look and you can see the rock but my tire isn't even on it it has like this weird bounding box around this this 
this rock. So they definitely got some work to do. But I mean, it's free to play these things. You kind of have to look beyond them, I guess, even though a lot of people are paying good money to play this game. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I It is kind of a weird thing, right? Yeah. Like if this game was 60 bucks, I would tell no one to buy it. You know, like you'd have to be a real hardcore first person shooter <laughs> fan and you'd have to have completely exhausted all of the great ones out there for you to want to play this. Yep. But the fact that it's free, I'm like, I can't really get mad at a game for being, you know, a little bit crappy in some regard when it's zero dollars and they don't force you to buy anything. You know, there's nothing that's locked out of the game. Uh, you know, you can naturally get everything in the game that people pay for. It's just going to take you a long damn time. Um, and that's just kind of the gamble you have to play. You know, I don't know how long this game's life, life, uh, lifespan will be. Um, but (laughs) <laughs> I, I've got to assume they're making a lot of money on it because there's a lot of people playing it. You know? Yeah. And also people have been saying that same type of thing about Eve online and next thing oh, you know, yeah. Eve online has been around for 10 years and, and doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So yep. who knows? It could be around for a long time and it could, it could keep getting really, really busy and, and, and a lot more people coming in. And especially once you get a lot of the Eve online players, um, that are basically playing like a political drama in space, um, yeah. get their uh, other gamer friends to come and say, like, Hey, come over here, play this game and we'll help you. We'll give you all this money. We'll give you all these uh, powers. Uh, that's going to maybe sway over some, some first person shooter fans that maybe want to play a new first person shooter. So that's yeah, interesting. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't not like it. Um, I'm not like, Oh my God, I got to play that again. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's good. I don't know. I dig it. Yeah. It's kind of a cross between, I mean, visually and gameplay wise, it's kind of a cross between Halo four <clears throat> and battlefield. Yeah. It definitely, you know? it definitely has the battlefield feel with a lot of like, um, tracers on, on people that are running around you. A lot of like things that are just shown in the environment. So people even behind yeah. walls, you'll see the little kind of the, the little, um, arrow above their head with their distance and stuff like that. It definitely feels, um, battlefield to me, but I mean, it's, it's fun and it's free. So if you have a PlayStation 3, <laughs> yeah. there's, there's no reason to not go check it out. Just be yeah, warned that you the first corner you come around, you will probably die. Yes, uh, <laughs> unless you're really, really lucky. Um, exactly. What did you think about the look of the game? Because I, uh, I thought it, looks, it actually looked pretty damn good. It looks really good. It, it looks, to me, uh, aesthetically, it looks almost better than than Halo to me. Like Halo, Halo yeah. I loved kind of like the jungle stuff. But when you get yeah. out of that and you're in the normal kind of... I don't know, buildings and rock. It was just like, oh yeah, I've been there, done that. This gives like... I actually like the more sterile, like light bridge environments a lot better than the the jungle stuff. Sure. In Halo. Sure. Uh, But I mean, they both look good. And this has kind of like a Tron kind of look to it. Everything has kind of blue lights and shiny and, and, um, and, and some really like, crazy looking futuristic kind of stuff like there's these huge cannons that are firing at these ships that are orbiting this planet that you're fighting on and yeah they look they they look good i don't know i i dig it yeah i dig yeah, it it's, I dig it's it. cool it's fun there's there's no real reason uh, not to try this game or give it a shot uh because it's free if we haven't said that before this game is free so oh it's free definitely check it out yeah, what did free. i pay for yeah. then some guy said, here, give me $40 and, and you yeah. can go download this thing. I'll, I'll make it so your, so your account can download it. I shouldn't have listened to that guy. You shouldn't have. Damn it. <laughs> so, Damn yeah, it. Dust 514. <clears throat> uh, it's going to be on my hard drive for a while because uh, my PS3 is – I have it for two reasons. Playing Blu-rays. <laughs> and Netflix. And playing exclusive. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I guess now it's a Netflix machine as well too. So it's it's uh, it's adopted a third reason. Um, so yeah, it's it's a Blu-ray player and it's an it's an exclusive player. So you know you've got you know any game that Quantic Dream makes, any game that Naughty Dog makes, you know, and yep. and uh, and a sports game here and a, here or there. So it's always good to just turn that thing on and actually play a game instead of you know for the longest time my ps3 controller was a tv remote you know See, you know not it's kind of depressing not everybody out there in the world's a fanboy that only wants to play stuff on one system though jeff so uh, you know what? I, i'm not really a fanboy of the <laughs> xbox as we will talk about in a few minutes. well not now but before you're like oh i like my trophies i like playing the games i like playing i like I talking do. to I, my friends i really love it but, but i know like, there's some fault i i I would I would make the distinction of fanboy as someone who can never address the faults of the console. And Xbox has a ton of faults, of which I have admitted to, like not that, not that I built the damn thing, but right. I have talked about ad nauseum. Sure. I, I it's my favorite system, but I'm not I don't think I'm a fanboy of it. That said, I've already bought two Xbox One consoles. 
<laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, let's get into the news. Um, we got a good one for you. <clears throat> uh, Microsoft held their press conference this week on Tuesday um, to unveil their their new Xbox. What was coming next for the Xbox? And um, they announced something that that is silly and ludicrous. And even the name is just like, what? Um, they announced what they're calling the Xbox One, um, which is going to make parents all over the world happy because they've already bought one of these 10 years ago. They don't need to buy another yeah, one. It's yeah. just such a weird naming thing. But anyway. Let's, let's break that down, actually, because I, I, you know what? People have talked to me before. They've listened to the show. They're not, they don't write in or whatever. And they're like, I don't understand why you and Lloyd think that the Wii U is such a bad name. And it's not that we think it's a bad name, but Mm -hmm. from a marketing standpoint, we do think it's a bad name, Mm -hmm. but from a marketing standpoint, it just makes no damn sense. It's not, it's not like it's we too. It's, it's we something, right? You have to make a distinction that this is the next level of the system. And I understand what Xbox is trying to do by saying, listen, this is more of a reimagining of an Xbox than it is the next step of Xbox. I think mm-hmm. they're trying to say that this is really where Xbox is going to start. You know, actually, they had uh, Rev3 Games. Adam Sessler did a, uh, a, a interview with uh, their like marketing PR guy or whatever, and the, one of the pull quotes from him was that uh, it might be too early to say, but this might be the last console you'll ever need to buy. And I think. What they're trying to do is say, like, this is what we want it to be. We want it to be this all-in-one thing. And I understand that. It's still really, really stupid, you know? Because like you said, other than us, right, people who are really into the industry and go and look at it, people who are in the chat room listening to this show, (laughs) if you're the average everyday parent, you know, who's going to walk into the store around Christmas time and say, Xbox One – doesn't my kid have the 360? Are you telling me this is 359 versions less than that? You know, and it's yeah. more expensive. I don't understand. It's, and anytime someone has to ask a question about a console, they're probably not going to buy it. Yeah, it's it's awkward at best. Um, it's just a, a strange name. And I get it. It's one console to rule your living room. It's mm-hmm. it's the one thing that you need to turn on. It does everything for you. I, I mean, I understand this is, the this marketing. This Sauron's Xbox console. Yeah, it's th- this goes back to Microsoft having problems naming things forever. Like um, like Windows Phone 7.5 um, Mobile. <laughs> yeah. It's like, really? What the hell is that? That That is a thing? Um, yeah. And it's such a sexy name, right? Uh, oh, what phone's that? Seven point five mobile Windows Phone. No, no, it's it's a Windows Phone seven point five oh, mobile edition. God. Um, it, like it's 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 asinine. Like their their naming is just like they don't have someone that knows marketing on on their staff. And Xbox has always been like different. Like they're good at naming things. They the Connect was like, oh yeah, it connects you to your console. It's yeah. it has the K in there, so it's like it's it's like you you think of you think of other things right it, it it's it's a good name this is just like the xbox one already exists the reason why they called the xbox 360 not the xbox two is because the playstation 3 was coming out and they're like oh well we don't want to seem one one less than the playstation so we're going to call it the 360 so we have a three in the name yeah. as well and now they're going yeah. back and calling it the xbox one and uh the Tony in the know, chat room and the Tony in the chat room says Xbox one will allow people to call it the Xbox um, and getting back to the Wii stuff. Wii U, you can't just call it the Wii because you already have that in your living room, which is why the Wii is such a bad name. But I don't know. The Xbox yeah. one is kind of a horrible name, but we don't really need to rail on the name. Let's get into the things that are really <laughs> stupid about so, the system. There's so much more to rail about. So uh, I actually do have like a, a very <clears throat> short, short list. There's like maybe four things here of things that, that I liked about the, the press conference and I liked about the console. But then my list of bad is like, you know, it's like, it's huge. I mean, this, do you, do you have a list so thing, of your lists? I actually, I uh, know I don't, I should have made a, <laughs> I'm, I'm the list guy here. Yes. Uh, but you know what? This this press conference was 60 minutes. It was pretty brief. Um, and I got to think that for me, 45 minutes of that was I'm just sitting here going like, what the hell is this? You know, I'm texting Lloyd at the same time. He's like, Did you hear this? And I'm like, yeah, that's that's fucking stupid. Like, no, even, what the hell are they thinking? Even better was when we get to the use game thing. And I was like, yeah, you can't play. I mean, there's a fee to use use games on the system. And you're like, no way. Microsoft would never do it. Then I sent you a link to a Polygon article. And you're like, and I was like, oh, God, oh I didn't realize God. that an article had dropped so quickly. And I was like, <laughs> you're like, oh, the embargo's up. So they've got all this information. And I'm sitting there looking at this thing on my phone going, 
you have got to be kidding me. Like it just, it totally blew my mind in the worst way. So let's, yep. let's keep getting into it here. Yep. By the way, guys, keep going in the chat room. Cause we're going to be throwing in your little quips and stuff as we go along. Uh, I know that a lot of people, not just us have a lot to say on this subject. <laughs> Num numb scholard in the chat room says hipsters will love, uh, they, they will love the original Xbox. So they will also think the Xbox one is the original one. So the hipsters yeah. will buy it cause it's, oh, yeah. it's, retro yeah i get that yeah sure that's so it's it. the throwback console all right so they <laughs> they kicked off they kicked off the presentation talking about here, here it is the xbox one and they had this big image on the screen and they're like here it is and this thing is as big as my computer desk it's yeah it's as big as my old vcr um it's i didn't huge. believe you that it was that big it's it's huge it is i saw them really, like they had like really the big. verve or something like that they put they took a picture of it next to this massive book and I, like yep. it was bigger than this book, and this book was like a hardcover edition, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this thing is huge. It it's is so it, big. It is really, really huge. And and basically, they they started off the presentation talking about TV and how this yep. this is basically uh, this this is gonna change the landscape for television in your living room. So the Xbox One has an HDMI port out, so you can act at your TV with an HDMI port. But it also is an HDMI in because they want you to take your current cable box and plug it into your Xbox One. And what it does is um, the system itself has has a processor that is running multiple operating systems. So it can do instant switching between games. So you, you go Xbox TV and it will switch right over to your TV tuner. Xbox game, it will go right back to your game. That's pretty cool. It was um, pretty cool. What they want you to do is basically have an IR blaster connected to your Xbox that you put in front of your cable box. And whenever you want to watch TV, you actually are going to watch it through your Xbox One. Um, it's going to have its own integrated guide when you choose a console or when you choose a, a television show, it changes the TV station on your on your box, whatever cable box you have. And then you can watch it on your Xbox One. I get that. That's kind of cool. I mean, that's what the Wii U is doing with their Wii U television. Um, yeah. What kind of made me kind of take a step back and scratch my head is we're, uh, we're we're in a world right now that is quickly moving away from live television they're moving mm -hmm. we're moving into a world of people that are cutting the cord especially gamers people that are that are paying um $90 a month internet fees to get the fastest internet they can in their area and they can't afford an extra $100 a month for cable so they're they're getting a Cable's netflix like yeah, yeah they're, they're getting a netflix subscription and they're cutting their cord and they're using things like if you're in the States, you're using Hulu um, in Canada. There's various services. You can go to like City TV or or CTV or CBC and watch some of those shows that way. There isn't, isn't one big website you can go to, but you can go to each individual station, uh, which is kind of cool. But I mean, I mean, we're, we're quickly as an industry moving away from live television and getting into kind of on demand stuff. So uh, Microsoft is focusing this like they've been. They've been focusing on a set top box for like the last 15 years. They had yeah, they had yeah. the the Windows set top box which had a keyboard and you could do your email on it and it was great, but it wasn't. Uh, but they said it was and um it was like web TV or whatever. Um and that didn't go anywhere. And they've they've launched like Windows multimedia PCs and hook your PC up to your television and do all this fun stuff. Well, no one wants a huge box right beside their television. They're, they they want to get rid of that stuff. They don't want this big noisy box with fans. Um, so that didn't really go anywhere. And now the next kick of the can is this Xbox One that has TV features, ignoring the fact that we're moving away from live television, except if you're a sports fan, you, that's like, the only reason I have TV. Like for me, that's the only reason why I have television as well. Like I, I don't watch my cable subscription at all. We watch Netflix. If my kids want to watch TV, I have, I have like a stupid number of DVDs and I've ripped them all. They're all my iTunes and I have Apple TVs connected to every television. So if the kids want to watch, uh, what, like whatever Pixar film, um, we own uh, they just basically have to go to the apple tv click down a couple buttons boom they're watching bugs life they're watching toy story um if they want to watch uh, cartoons we go to netflix and they watch their dora my daughter loves dora or nick watches like x-men or spider-man or spongebob and but we don't we don't watch live television and i'm i'm old i'm not 
someone that is I'm not I'm not an 18 year old that has their first apartment who is the gaming demographic which everybody wants they want the 18 year olds 18 to 22s is like that's the market you want to buy your product because then they are guaranteed to be with you for the next 10 years yeah exactly like disposable income yeah you know and and uh, and of the mindset that that uh, you know they're just going to keep buying you know that yeah I, I work at a university and I talked to some kids uh, that are in their first year of university. And I was like, so um, do you ever want to buy a cable subscription? And they're like, F no. And I was like, why? And they're like, well, we just stream everything online. Like we get it. We yeah. get it off Netflix or we watch movies um, off off of Netflix or we go to CTV. Or we watch that stuff that way. They they don't watch live television like this is a whole generation moving up that that will never own cable. I don't know. That was to me. They were focusing so much. Like fifty percent of their presentation was about television, 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 television. Yeah, and, and it's it a big the, part. And, and that that is that that is the the thing that is most likely to die in the next five years in most people's living rooms. You know, they they had uh, they had this uh, ex executive of CBS Television come out, and she was like, "We're doing a partnership with uh, the Bungie or not Bungie, uh, the the three four three studios guys." And Steven Spielberg is coming in to produce this Halo TV show that's going to be, I'm going to assume, exclusive <laughs> to the Xbox television service, uh, uh, which yeah, by the way was actually pretty cool. Um, yeah. I thought that was cool. But, you know, St- Steven Spielberg comes in there from like live thing, you know, some sort of cam video camera. And he great. says, I really wish I could be there. And I'm like, you do not wish that at all. You're doing something <laughs> much more. But you're here for six minutes at the most, you know, just, yep. yeah, we're doing the show. It's going to be great. But uh, but but he name dropped all of his favorite games, man. Like this guy, this Steve, Steven Spielberg, he is a gamer. He's like, I like games like Pong and this new Halo thing seems like it's pretty cool. So I'm going to do a TV show about it. It's yeah. like, dude, you hey, name- have you played my game Boom Blocks? Yeah, you name drop Pong. That and you're the guy making the Halo television series. Like, give me, uh, give me a break. But yeah, like they didn't say whether that's going to be on terrestrial television or if that's going to be focused fully on like a streaming thing from Xbox Live. But it was just like the <laughs> Tony in the chat room. Spielberg mentioned more games than Microsoft did. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. That is very yeah, true. He got really close. Actually, there might be the same amount of games. That's hilarious. Holy shit. Oh, that's crazy. So anyway, they they spent way too much time talking about something that is not going to make a like it's not going to make a splash in many people's living rooms um, unless you're an avid sports fan and you're going to have to keep your cable subscription just to get your ESPN or your TSN. Yeah. Um, I, which, more and more. Which, uh, in that, in that uh, demo that the guy was doing on stage, <laughs> all the, like all the big stuff we saw was sports, right? He's like mm-hmm. watching the basketball game and he's pulling up like stats on Bing, you know, the picture in picture thing was pretty cool. It actually is a really cool technology. It, it seems like it works really well, but you can do that and- now. You can do that now. You can do that now. Um, you, you can do but, it. Now. You can do it now. There's if you have a smart television, you can pull up yeah. all that stuff live. You can you can oh, have yeah. you can have the picture kind of picture in picture with the web browser, um, with Skype, um, with yep, yep. with other stuff. You can do it with your iPad that everybody seems to have these days. That yep. does second screen stuff. They surf the internet while watching television. Like this isn't this isn't like a, a revelation. This isn't like holy crap. This has never been done before. This is just like oh yeah. What, what I was going to say, though, is that this would have been really mind blowing if this was like, the you know, the launch event for the Xbox 360. Sure. Then you would have had something, you know, but and, it's cool, but I don't need it and I don't care about it. You and, know? and the thing that this thing, the thing that's even worse is this box, this Xbox one doesn't even have a tuner inside of it. So that means that if you're in the States and you get you get over the air HD signals, you can't just watch that with your Xbox. You need another box that plugs in, which is really bizarre because for the longest time Microsoft is trying to do the IPTV thing with the Xbox 360 where you'd pay a monthly fee and you'd get your IPTV uh, cable subscription streamed to your Xbox. So it's just like, did you forget what you did four years ago? Like, I don't know. It, it seemed very like schizophrenic. Like they don't know. They, yeah. they, they have to be in the living room because that's where Apple's going. They're bringing up the Apple television. So we got to get there. We got to well, be the box in the living room. I'm actually glad you brought that up because it's been certainly circulating quite a bit. And it's a, it's a subscription that I'm subscribing or theory I'm subscribing to. It really seemed like a lot of this, first of all, I don't know if Xbox had a real decision or like a, a decision made about who they were gearing this show for. Like, 
you've got a, you've got this thing that's going to be live on Xbox Live, right? It's going to be live on the internet, and it's also going to be live on Spike TV at ten o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday. <laughs> Who are you expecting to watch this, right? You're going to have your hardcore gamers out there. You didn't show a lot of games. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. You showed a ton of TV stuff, right? And I'm sure if anybody's watching this on Spike TV, TV, <laughs> it's the only thing they'll watch on TV that month, probably. You know, it's you know, it's so bizarre, mm-hmm. and it's just. It's such a strange way to kind of structure this entire event. Well, it, it kind of said everything about the event when they went to live television and the show that was on the screen was The Price is Right. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> this, is a, this is a console for the old people that still watch game shows during the day, apparently, is what they were is what the marketing was trying to say. I don't know. So, you know, with the theory, right, of, of Xbox having this event to show people that, hey, listen... Apple probably, I don't know, I mean, no, it's not specifically said, but the theory is that Apple probably will not have a game console that will come with their, you know, Apple TV if they're making a TV kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Because they're they, already, like they're, to, they already have a game console. It's called an yeah. iPad and an iPhone and an Apple yeah. TV that costs $99 that you send your AirPlay stuff to. Like, Yeah, but, but but like what you're saying is that that they were trying to beat them to the punch in this section. And I totally buy that and I, I totally agree with that. I think <laughs> yeah. you beating, know they beating have them like, to an irrelevant thing that exactly, isn't gonna exist right? in five yeah. years. Like it's just yeah, I don't know. Do you wanna race into that tree? What are we gonna do when we get there? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna beat you there. It's running with your arms out towards a brick wall. Like, yeah, you got there first. How did that work for you? Like I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, they, they focused way too long on the television features, which just don't make sense. They they had some really cool they announced a um, partnership with the NFL, um, which is really cool. Um, if you're an NFL fan and you have, um, if you if you do like, um, if if you run leagues with your friends and you do fantasy football, uh, that is all tied in now through NFL.com. So Didn't when you're, it was going to be free though. Uh, I, I would assume it is because get it to set up a if you're if you're doing a fantasy team, um, you can there's a lot of websites you can go to where you can do that for free. They didn't say yeah. it was free. I would assume it is, maybe not. Um, they've NFL said makes you pay for everything. They're well, ridiculous. They, they also said uh, there's rumors coming out that Microsoft paid the NFL 400, 400 million dollars to to get into this partnership with them. So I hope they would get maybe free a uh, fantasy football stuff um, with that with that deal. <laughs> but know. but hey, who, who knows? Who knows, right? Uh, but it's really cool. Like you're watching the game and and your favorite guy scores, and immediately something pops up on the side. It's like you got you got two points on your fantasy league. Um, and it shows your stats amongst all your friends and stuff like that. That's really cool. I like that. But you can do that right now with your iPad or with your Android tablet or with your even your Windows 8 tablet if you have one of those things that is actually not in a drawer somewhere. Um, yeah. You can have all that stuff right while you're watching tv like it doesn't need to pop up on the screen that you're watching like i when i watch tv i don't want to have a pop-up on the screen i don't want achievements popping up when i watch tv it's like skipped commercial achievement unlocked like i wouldn't want that because i'm watching (laughs) television for the sake of watching television um but the nfl thing is is really cool we'll see what happens um but yeah interesting yeah i mean and with that you know they also talked a lot about how xbox glass support is going to be implemented and you know like on your (laughs) iphone all these tablets and stuff if you have a microsoft surface tablet and you're going to be buying an xbox one i think you're in for a really nice integrated system Mm -hmm. if it's stuff you use every day that's another question Mm -hmm. but i think it's they're going to work really well together which i think is kind of interesting but i'm I'm not gonna i'm not gonna buy one of those friggin' surface tablets like what for yeah yeah it's 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 just bizarre. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about the hardware. Uh, the box yeah. itself is huge. It's It oh, seems God. like it's bigger than the original Xbox. It's about the same height. It seems like it's wider. Um, and I, it, it seems thinner to me than the original, but it definitely seems longer, like wider for sure. Yeah, it's 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 a big system. You're going to have to have a lot of room in your entertainment center to put this thing. Um, I, and if I'm not mistaken, it's the same size as the tablets that Moses came down the mountain with, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, that's what I think. Close, so yeah, yeah. it's just, just a massive, it's got to weigh a ton too. Like what the hell is inside of it that, you know, it, a big, a lot of big, big, give, big fan, the size of like yeah. a fan in your house that is spinning really slowly to make yeah. absolutely no noise in your living room. Well, yeah. And they say that it's, it's a ne- nearly, nearly uh, silent, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, running, which is cool. Uh, a lot of people complained about, oh, there's going to be so much TV integration in here. It's not going to play games. Uh, you know what? Quite frankly, I don't think that'd be the case. I think that they're going to be two kind of separate systems that'll use the same 
internal st- structure. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, we really don't know. But yeah, it's 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 friggin' huge. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just huge. huge. Well, maybe maybe there's a power source, a power supply inside, so you don't have to have that mm, Ghostbusters I, box. I don't think so. Like they they showed the back of the like some pictures showed the back, and it has just a two prong plug, which mm-hmm. looks like something you'd have hanging off of a of a brick. Um, that would go into it. So yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, who knows? It's crazy. Um, controller, controller, the, the controller is really cool. So they've redesigned the controller. Um, they've made, yeah, they've redesigned they've redesigned it. It looks, it looks a hell of a lot different than the current one. Um, the the sticks are, um, like the ribbed for your pleasure. Yeah. They have, it it looks like they're, uh, I don't know, like you bought a, a mag light, um, a mag mag light flashlight taken like the 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 quarter inch of the bottom sawed it off made a little dimple in the middle and then screwed it on to your current ones because it has like this weird texture on the outside um and then it has like a a pit inside of it it looks really really cool it looks like something that razor would have designed um which is neat Um, still convex thumb thumbsticks which i love i i hate con or sorry concave thumbsticks i hate convex com- thumbsticks mm-hmm. um so I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of that yeah it, um, it looks really cool it's a little bit taller because it has this little thing at the top with an xbox logo um mm-hmm. people are saying that there's like an ir a thing inside of it so when you do stuff on your television i don't remember them saying that i heard it on a podcast today and i'm just like really that seems really kind of weird. I don't think they weird. did say that. No, they, they didn't say it at all. But there's been a lot of interviews after, right? So, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so who knows where that came out. If that's the case, I'd be kind of scratching my head. That would be like the Wii U gamepad doing that type of stuff. Maybe. Who knows? Um, I, I doubt it, though. Um, but uh, the other thing about it is um, in your triggers, um, they've added... Um, different vibration um in each trigger so as a game developer you can make a trigger vibrate um independently of anything else that is vibrating so you have vibrating in each of the wings that comes out you i think you have one in the middle and then one in each of the triggers so there's possible for some really crazy force feedback inside of uh, inside of this controller which is really kind of neat yeah, I think um, that kind of tactical <clears throat> feedback will be really interesting. Yep. Uh, you know, in, in games like shooters or racing games, uh, you know, anything that, that really requires kind of a feather touch mm-hmm. on the uh, on the shoulder buttons, I think, will be really cool. Um, I would have liked to see, but I'm not, and I'm not bummed out that it's not in there. But I would have liked to see tactical feedback on the control sticks as well too. But if you do it wrong, it's just the worst controller ever. So I'm I'm kind of happy it's not in there, but it would have been cool to see. Um, another thing that we should mention is Ver, the, uh, that's where I saw this picture. Uh, the Verve uh, has a picture of the underside of the controller. It has a different underside mount for your headset. So none of your headsets are going to work. And I think what they're trying to do here is Microsoft is going to be implementing a, a proprietary uh, adapter. So you know if you if you've got a, a Turtle Beach headset or any other kind of headset, uh, they'll probably give you one packed into the box, but you know, your, your two millimeter, uh, stereo headphone jack is not going to work anymore. Mm. So that kind of sucks because I do have a $250 headset here that I, that I have that I love. So I won't be able to chat with people on the thing, but I mean, it'll probably be two years before I even think about getting an Xbox one. It has, um, it has USB ports on the back of the thing doesn't it mm-hmm. did i did i see that i think it has usb I, ports i didn't see that okay I'm, I'm trying to remember um if that's I don't the know case if it does or doesn't i just don't remember seeing it uh, if that's the case then you can possibly connect your headset through usb that way if, you, if, if yours that's if your base has an, a usb out for the playstation 3 you can maybe plug it in that way but yeah i mean i mean they do that every year like from xbox one to xbox two the headset changed and you needed adapter if you wanted to use your xbox one headset with mm-hmm. your X, xbox 360 um they did that again um yeah it makes sense but um, i feel like they'll probably sell an adapter and anything new like i feel like they, they yeah like you know they'll they'll uh they'll end up either charging some sort of royalty if you want to make something with that adapter <clears throat> or you know sure. they'll they'll just own that market or whatever there'll but, be enough uh, chinese knockoffs that you can buy on some <laughs> on, off of ebay like the yeah. the week after this console comes out day so. after launch they'll yeah. be all out there so that Not, was just something that i noticed today and i was like oh that kind of sucks but exactly so Connect. that's that's the new controller. The other other huge item that uh, they showed off was Connect. As mm-hmm. you were saying, it is now required. The system will not turn on with Connect not connected to it. Something that you actually called months ago. Yeah, I was hoping you were wrong. I I thought that would happen because um, 
I, I had I had a feeling about some of the things that they're going to do with this console. Turns out that is exactly what it is. If you do not have Connect connected, your system will not turn on, which is really stupid. Even more scary um, for me, um, not that I'm Mr. Tinfoil Hat privacy, like, <laughs> oh, my God, the world's out to get me. Um, but I, I live in a house with young kids and the Connect microphone is always on. It is always on because all you have to say is Xbox on and your Xbox will turn on. Um, it is always listening. Not to say that it's listening to everything, but who knows what could happen. Maybe maybe people could could uh, break in, hack into your system, hack into other things. Like, like you never know. When you have a microphone and a camera always engaged in your house, that that gets to kind of scary big brothery kind of stuff um and you wonder like so, you wonder if the fbi can um can can basically get a warrant um to then turn on your camera in your in your house like it, it's yeah. that type of thing where it's just like holy crap this is this is really scary and there's and you can't play without it so you kind of need it to be there yes you, you can't play without it which which really blows uh but Xbox did release a statement about the always on thing because there was quite a bit of a debate if it's always going to be on or always online, what's the difference? They do have a few different powered states. So your Xbox can actually be off without unplugging it totally. You can send it into a state where like mine is right here. It's completely off and you know, you'll walk up to it and say Xbox on. It won't do anything, right? But there is a sleep mode, a power saving mode in which the Xbox is technically on and you can come in and say anything to it and it will pick up that and then turn things on. So mm -hmm. there is a way to shut the thing off without unplugging it from the wall. Sure. Um, but it's it is kind of weird. Like, you know, I don't uh, it's just it's kind of strange. I, I um, would I would prefer uh, as someone that has young kids in the house and just the fact that maybe something could start without me knowing about it. Maybe a Skype yeah. call could be initiated and my kids are running around the house um, just from them saying something. Yeah. Um, it would be better if you could you could set in the settings that it, it, your connect is always off and, let, and you can only turn on the system by holding down the power button on the controller just like you do now. Um, that would be perfect to me. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And I, I don't really want to have a microphone and camera set up in my living room at all times. It's yeah, it's just it's like, also kind of it, it sucks that like there's no lens cover on the camera. It's something yeah. like like a door that you can swing closed and yeah. it, it is it is a little weird and and I you know I think that a lot of people are going to have those concerns. I would hope that there's some sort of parental locks that go into place. I mean, yeah. they would have had to have think. I, I hope they would have thought about privacy concerns like that, but they didn't really address them, which is kind of weird. Yeah, I, I don't think there will be anything. I think they want this to be as open as possible. They want it always on um, because they want to use it um, for all of their um, all, all of the the navigation in in the system. Yeah. Um, so. If we then talk about the Connect as a piece of hardware, it's been vastly improved. Oh, I mean, it's the, the tech on this thing is it's insane. Amazing. The I mean, it can, it can detect how dense your body is. It can detect your heart rate. Yep. The detection of things like it can detect minor movements of your your wrist twisting and your fingers. I mean, it's really fantastic. Didn't you say you hate the Connect? I do, gaming? but I think the I think the technology is interesting. Yeah, I'm not going to stand at my living room and play a. Oh, football games no no i i just wanted to to verify that 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 you're a guy that that didn't like it um yeah i don't the the hardware itself is now it has a 1080p sensor um and it also has um improved ir it has a, a built-in ir sensor uh, behind the lens i think uh something something crazy like that where it's it can map things a lot easier like you said it can it can pick up small minute movements it can pick up fingers um it can see if you're looking at the screen or not um with that um, you can do a bunch of other stuff as well. Like you said, heart rate and things like that. Um, the best part about it, um, if you are a connect user right now, it's playable within like about a meter. So you can be about a meter away from it. You don't have to be like 10 feet away from it. Um, moving all your furniture out of the way, getting rid of your, your tables and, and stuff. Um, you can play it with a lot less room. So, um, yeah, which is really good. That's a good a thing. A meter is a, about, about three and a third's foot for you, uh, us guys. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, they also said that a windows version of the connect Two will be coming next year for anybody that would ever want to put a connect on their PC. I don't understand why, but it, it was there and they talked about it. 
Well, they didn't the talk Kinect about it. Is interesting it technology. I, I think that that full non-controller motion control is very interesting. I have no desire to just stand up and run around my living room like an asshole. You know, like I just think it's stupid. It's not for me. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, it's really cool that the technology has improved so much. It certainly makes it a better thing to have. It sucks that you're gonna have to have one though. Like, yeah. Damn it. Yeah. Exactly. Um. There's so, more things that suck. <laughs> yeah. Um, let, well, we're going to get into the used game thing. Um, but before that, we're um, the system itself, they talked about how when you buy a new game in the store, uh, you bring it home, you put it into your system. It has a Blu-ray drive, so you can play Blu-ray movies as well. Um, but you buy a game, you put it in the system, and the first thing it does is it starts copying the contents of that disk to your hard drive. And then you have to activate your game. Um, I... I they didn't say how my assumption is that you pull a little piece of paper out of your game and you punch in the 20 digit code and then it activates the game on your account and then it's playable right from your hard drive. You don't have to put the disc in ever again. I like that. That is really cool. Yep. The problem with that now is I take my disc and I give it to Jeff. Jeff, you take the disc, you put it in. It doesn't have a code, so you have to go to the online store and you have to pay your $60 to buy a retail version of this game so that it will actually install on your hard drive. Essentially, what they're doing is they're killing um, they're, they're killing casual lending between friends. Um, they're killing a little bit more than that, but, is, well, but yeah, they're certainly doing that as well too. Yes, but they're, yes and no. Used games will be playable on the system. So you can yes. go to a store that Microsoft has come into an agreement with and you could buy a used game for less than retail, put it in your system and it will just work. Um, there was some news that came out um, right after the event that said, yeah, used games are fine. You just put it in and you pay the fee, which let's say it's a new game. So you pay the $60 and there you go. It's on your system. Um, stuff has come out um, since then because Microsoft is in a like a crazy like damage control mode. It's like, holy crap, everybody's hating us. Let's let's get behind this. So, I don't understand how they couldn't have so seen that coming. Yeah, well, exactly, because apparently they don't have anybody in their marketing department that really like knows what people think. The blinders are on on these people. Uh, um, so basically what they said is that the Xbox One will automatically authenticate, uh, authenticate the game with an encryption code that's built into the game's disk when it's installed on the machine. So you don't need the codes it's built into the thing. Um, the authentication on the hard drive is then tied to the game, and it's verified regularly. So every 24 hours, it will verify that you still have a license to play this game so if you take your xbox or if your internet goes down maybe you're changing providers you don't have the internet for two days all your games will stop working yeah that's, so that's, that's that's really crappy games. which is um, stupid because you don't have to have the internet to access your xbox live profile if they're tied to your profile they should also be saved locally like all your profile and achievement information but is. you didn't let me finish the reason okay. why that is happening is because what microsoft's gonna allow you to do is to sell your games back so you can hit a button it'll sell the game back you no longer own it um, they don't want people to have, say, two consoles with your Xbox Live account with the game installed on multiple consoles, one account, because that's the only way that you'll be able to do that, and then um, basically sell a game, but then still have it on a console because it's constantly phoning home. Every 24 hours, it has to check with Microsoft to see what licenses are valid. So you could trade in a game and still play it for another 24 hours, but then eventually it's just going to stop working. Um, so they haven't yeah. said how this system is working yet, but used games will be available. They just might not be available the way that you like it. Um, I've heard a couple interviews. One was with uh, Major Nelson. I read a little bit of an article about it. And apparently there's going to be a way for a game um, a game seller, like whether it's GameStop or a mom and pop thing like PNP games, to um, basically get a license from Microsoft for selling used games. Um, it'll evolve some sort of w Windows Azure um, cloud app that they run. So they take the disc from you. They buy it for X number of dollars. They'll have probably a list of what they have to pay for each game. Um, <laughs> they will put this game into a system. It'll read it. It'll take the authentication code. It'll invalidate that from your console. It will then make it available for um, repurchase. Um, the game store will then resell it. They'll pay a fee to Microsoft. They'll get a few dollars. So they haven't killed it, 
but they've killed it because if 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 you go to PNP games and you trade in a game that you paid sixty dollars for the next week, they give you fifty dollars for it. Then you pay another ten dollars, you get another game. They sell it for five dollars more than that. They make a little bit of money. Now trade in value is they're gonna give you they're gonna give you twenty dollars for it because they're still gonna want to make a little bit of money off of this. And maybe they can't even do that. Maybe Microsoft is going to mandate what they have to pay for all these used games so that if I go on my Xbox and hit resell or if I take the disc to uh, EB Games, I get the same amount of money. We don't know what this agreement is because, of course, Microsoft isn't talking about this. They said they will disclose more information in the near future. But it all sounds like this is a way for Microsoft to control the price of games from day one to whenever this disc will not work anymore. Um, I think it's bullshit. I think it's terrible. <laughs> I think it is horrible, horrible, horrible. And as I said, after the Microsoft presser, all Sony had to do to win the internet that day was to say, we love used games. And that would have been it. Yeah. Um, because I, I want to trade in a game. I don't want to go through the garbage of, or, or sorry, I don't even want to do that. I want to buy a game, play it, and then give it to my buddy to play. Yeah. You can't do that now without the buddy paying $60 to put it in their system. Yeah, the lending thing is just horseshit. I mean, the thing about it is that after all that stuff that you just talked about, imagine the work on Microsoft on Microsoft's part that has to go into implement that system, which is needlessly complex, you know? Yep. So they want essentially a share of a used game market. Yep. DRM. Where, Sorry, I didn't mean to you know, interrupt you. No, that's that's okay. Uh, what I, I was almost finished. Uh, they they want a share of a used game market. That okay, fine. Yeah, I understand that. Whatever. Even though it's bullshit and used games really aren't going to impact your overall sales because a lot of people who buy used games can't afford them full price anyway. So whatever. But you now have a system where Microsoft has probably spent millions of dollars trying to figure this out, and now they're going to slowly make it back. You know, eight bucks at a time. I mean, it's just mind boggling. It's just the just the longest way to break even I've ever heard of in my life. Yeah, it's it just doesn't make sense to me. Like I understand why they're doing it, but it is so anti-consumer and so pro we want to make all the money. Um I I can't see this working for them. I I, I can only see this backfiring for some in in some way. Yeah, I mean it's just it's it's bizarre and like quite fr- like we can say about this entire Xbox thing you know, if you're like, hey, what's your opinion on the Xbox One event? I'd be like, I just, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I don't, I understand, but I don't get it. You know, it's just, it's one bizarre move after another, you know, uh, TV aside, if we're focusing on the way that this is, you know, plays games and functions with games and in a game environment, it's just very friggin' weird, you know, mm-hmm. um, the online thing, you know, the used game thing is so stupid and you know it it i think it will definitely hurt the console in the long run oh yeah you know how i found about found out about games that were good you know up until i would say maybe the xbox 360 somebody lent them to me you know Mm -hmm. they're like hey you know i think you'll like this game play it you know i don't have any money i was i'm a freaking kid you know my parents are gonna buy me every video game out under the sun they lend me a game and i'll play it and then eventually i might go and buy it you know yeah it's just also I don't know if I mean I I I don't know if there are numbers out there readily available, but can you can anyone attribute used game sales to a drop in orders of new release games? I well, no. can't see that being the case. I because I, it's impossible to prove, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. it's like if I couldn't buy the game for fifty dollars and I had to pay sixty, I wouldn't buy the game, and then I would never own it. Yeah. Um, but you can't. You, they can't. They can never prove how many people feel that way. Um, what I was going to say about DRM, uh, DRM, digital rights management, only exists to basically make things difficult for people. It only hurts the consumer um, because people always find a way around it. Like they, there was DRM on games for on the PC forever. A lot of them would like they they would install like backdoors on your system. There was like crazy stuff that these game makers were doing and they only hurt the people that were actually paying for the game because people that were going to pirate the software would remove all this DRM and it would work anyway. And these days you have DRM like Ubisoft had for a while that had your game had to phone home to a server. Well, then that server goes offline because everybody's installing at the same time and then you have everybody that bought your game can't play it on day one um, all the way to SimCity. SimCity, they say it's online because it has to be online. Uh, bull crap. It's online because that's DRM and they want people to sign up for an account like World of Warcraft, not play on their PC. 
well, what happened with SimCity? Their, their launch was terrible because everybody was trying to install it. Their servers couldn't handle it and it would fall over. Microsoft said that we have 300,000 servers uh, and that is just them beating their chest. And I don't think they have 300 servers that are that are solely for Xbox Live. They're probably talking about the whole Windows Azure like data center well, stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, they've, they've got to run so much extra stuff now and they can't be <clears throat> solely devoted. To, if they survived on, on 15,000 or whatever, like if yeah. you're going to, like it doesn't make any sense. Oh, we we ex, you know expanded thirty fold. You know yeah. it's like why? Why would you spend all that money? You know yeah. like yeah, and it's because they <laughs> they're they're running Windows Azure, which is their data center. It's like Google um Google Compete or Compute Engine or Amazon Compute Engine. It's yeah. a similar thing. But it's that like Microsoft if, if wants Google to do. said our entire server base is just to run our phones. Yeah, but you know, like that's what they're trying to say to us. It's oh, like, exactly. Exactly. Um, the other thing about uh, used games, which doesn't make sense, is um, I know a lot of people that don't have a lot of money. And the only way that they play games is they found $60 somehow, whether it was like a birthday present or a Christmas present, and they bought a new release game. They rush home after buying it. They put it in their system and they play straight until they beat it. So it takes them a day or two whatever three four five whatever um they finish it they get their allowance for that week or their money that they have left over from paying bills or whatever it is they take the game and their twenty dollars back to the store they trade in the game they buy another game for five or ten dollars they go back home they do the same thing so they're spending maybe five or ten dollars a week but they're getting a new game every week because they're doing the trade-in dance now if 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 this use game thing is really what it seems to be, they're going to be buying a heck of a lot less games because it's going to be a lot more expensive and they're going to get less money for the trade-ins and the, and the trade-in um, or buying the used games are going to be almost as expensive as buying a new game. Mm-hmm. So it goes from them being able to play two or two to four games a month to maybe two to four games a year because they're going to have to be saving a lot more money before they get in there and pay for new games and that's without the price of the consoles games going up in this new generation every generation console games have kind of gone up about ten dollars if this one goes up another ten dollars i mean they're going to need to save more money to to do this this trade dance and it's going to be even harder because of the less money they're going to get for trade and value and all that stuff like that so yeah has, just, has it been said i don't know if it's been said um that that on the on the trade-in games are they haven't said anything money gonna, they haven't said anything they so haven't i don't know said anything at all they just I, said that we're planning Planning this and we'll give you details when we can i would be a little bit more okay with it if i knew that some of that money was going to be kicked back to the developer and that's what's happening into microsoft no they're splitting stuff. they're splitting the money with the developers and all microsoft right. i'm still pissed off i think it's still stupid but it doesn't hurt as much you're like okay so the at least the people who made the know. game are getting the share see and <coughs> excuse me i've never been a believer about that whole well game developers are getting screwed out of the used, not, used game not. market it's like well no you sold the game it's like if i go to a used bookshop and i buy a book should the original author get the money from that sale or if i go buy a used movie if i buy used cds if i buy old vinyl like yeah i i'm buying something that someone already bought and i sure it's uh I, I think you would have a hard time proving to anyone, and I, I think actually it's been written about quite often that that developers, like the guys who are there coding and stuff, they're paid based on their performance. So they're paid based on okay, this is how good you are, so you get like an hourly wage or salary or whatever it is, and then if the game does well, you get a bonus. But after that, you know, if the game sold, if you buy a new copy of that game three years down the line, it's not like eight cents that goes to a developer who sat at a computer. It goes no, to the publisher. It goes house. to the publisher, and that's why publishers like, are in bed with the 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 game manu- or the game system yeah. manufacturers because they want this in they want more money yeah um, so that that argument about all oh, the developers getting screwed is horse shit and 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 there's arguments it's like well um, most games are sold used that are that are sold today and it's really hurting our industry well that's happening in our industry because games are sixty dollars and a DVD that you buy in the store is twenty dollars so yeah. if I could buy three movies. Uh, three pieces of entertainment for every one piece of gaming entertainment I buy, I'm probably less likely to want to go buy used DVDs and more likely to want to go buy used games because they're more expensive. So they're saying that the prices are high because of the used game market. Well, the used game market is there because the prices are so high. It's like, what came first, chicken or the egg? And I, I mean, the, the iOS has shown that people are willing to pay money for games and not worry about trading them in if they're cheap enough. People will drop 99 cents, they'll drop $2, they'll drop $5, $10 on a game 
and play it, enjoy it, and then go on to the next one because it's cheap enough. It's like buying music. It's like buying a movie rental. Um, but when games start to get six to be to become sixty dollars or even forty dollars on a handheld, it's like crap. I got to really think about this purchase. I can't impulse yeah. buy a game. Yeah, and it. it- you know, it, it makes us feel like we've got burned more when you've spent $65 and the game doesn't meet your expectations. Or a lot three of weeks later, is, the game drops by $20. Oh, that's the worst. I mean, you're like, damn it. You know, like you're being punished for being an early adopter, yeah. which I think is kind of how it's always been. But so, still, I mean, it's not fair. No. Not that any of this should be fair, by the way. I mean, <laughs> gamers, right? You know, we are we're always trying to flex our mouths. We're like, we got all the power. Just stop buying the game's. It's not going to change there. I don't think I really, and and this is being me being very cynical by the way, but um, uh, I don't think there's going to be ever a situation where gamers will stop buying games as a form of protest because we don't want to stop buying games. It's the thing we like to do and we'll pay. If the games are 120 bucks, we'll find a way to pay. That's how it's going to happen. I bought street fighter two on my super Nintendo and it was $80 for the game. Mm -hmm. Um, people that bought great game though it was a great game at the time <laughs> for sure people that bought um final fantasy or final yeah final fantasy 2 or 3 on the super nintendo they paid 90 dollars for those cartridges and yeah. they were happy to do it um we will pay more if we have to but more people will buy more games if they're cheaper because not yeah. everybody is the hardcore gamer like who was buying fun like square enix rpgs way back Idiots. in the day Oh, I thought you meant today. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, like people that were hardcore into gaming, people that love those games. It yeah. wasn't like, oh, what's this Final Fantasy 2 thing? It's $90. I should go check it out. I mean, it was people that knew about the game. Um, nowadays on the iPad, um, people are buying Poker Night 2 on the iPad because it's five bucks. It's like, oh, yeah, I like poker. I like these characters. Yeah, I'll check it out yeah. and play it. Um, the price of games has to come down for this whole used game thing to really go away. Um, I don't think they will. And that's not going to happen. And basically, another thing that this use the the lack of used games uh, has done is I can go to P and P Games, I can buy Chippendale Rescue Rangers for the NES, mm-hmm. I can buy um, Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube, I can go buy a game from Xbox 360 that I like or a game from the original Xbox, and I could buy it, I could put it in my system, and I could play it. <clears throat> Xbox One, that is impossible. Because I'll go to a used game store and I will buy a disc and then I will have to activate it. It might not be properly deactivated. So I might have to pay a a fee on top of already buying this game used. It just adds a whole bunch more confusion into the system. And it and it probably makes it impossible for a lot of people to buy used games five or five years down the line. It's like, oh, what's this Xbox One? I'm just getting into gaming. I heard that there's all these good games. I'm going to go buy them at a used game store because they won't be there because these stores won't be around if this is the crap that's happening with all the consoles. So I I really hope Sony is smart. I, I really hope Sony is smart and doesn't do this well i mean uh, here's the thing uh if sony came out tomorrow and said <clears throat> used games not a big deal anything you want no 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 fee none of that kind of shit they're not going to get everybody from xbox they're going to get a lot of people there are going to still be people who are going to go out and buy the xbox one day one you know the 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 real fanboys of the system and, and stuff like that um but yeah you know uh, one of the things i love about used games going to P and p or whatever it is I can walk in there and say, like, damn it, you know what? I really want to play a launch title from the 360. And I can go back and do that, you know, yeah. like, because yeah, there's so pay, many out there. I want to go play Perfect Dark. Yes, you exactly. Can go do that. You won't be able to do that on the Xbox One um, because you don't know what you'll be getting. You don't, don't know. I, I, I can't even predict if there's going to be used games in a game store because who knows what Microsoft's terms are going to be for used games. It might make it harder for game stores to carry used games for Xbox One, so they just won't do it. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe GameStop will be entirely digital. You'll download a GameStop app on your Xbox and have yeah. a credit card thing. I mean, like, oh. that might be how it works. Oh, it's scary, man. Anyway, okay, so we we railed on used games for about a half hour. Yeah. Um, l- let's talk about some other things. Um, uh, no, the... the <laughs> The whole always online, not online garbage, um, we got a little bit of clarification. I've already talked a little bit about it, is um, they've come out and said that this is not an always online system, but you need a network to play your games. What? So what this means is that you have to activate your games. So we, we said that there's an activation yeah. thing every 24 hours. So what this means is that 
if you're someone that lives in the middle of nowhere that doesn't have an internet connection, you can't go to a store, buy an Xbox One, buy a stack of games, and then go and play it because you need the internet to play it. You can't take um, your Xbox One to your cabin and play it in your cabin unless you have an internet access somehow in your cabin because there's the phone home thing. So this is probably the first console that fully requires the internet to play. Um, so you, if you don't have an internet access in your house, you cannot play games. Um, I know a lot of people that for a long time when the iPhone came out, um, or the, um, sorry, the iPod touch came out and was able to download games. They didn't have Wi-Fi at home. So they would go to work and use their work Wi-Fi to download games and then they'd go home and play them. You can't even do that with Xbox One because you always have to activate your games every 24 hours or whatever that that time frame is going to be. Absolutely insane. And they're limiting their market because of that. I mean, internet access is pretty ubiquitous, but there's a lot of people that just can't afford it. And this is preventing those people from getting on the network, which is crap. Yeah, you know, it's <clears throat> it's bizarre that they've made that choice. I mean, there's something like uh, 350 million people in North America, and it's just over 100 million of those who actually have internet installed in their house. And I know it's growing quickly, but the thing is, there are people who will never get internet, or they will take it'll take a long time. There are houses that don't have internet that have Xboxes. And and, and the, <laughs> the ironic thing about that, those people that have no internet but are paying for stuff, they're probably paying for cable and they'd be the people that would really benefit from this Xbox one cable experience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then they, they get rid of cable to pay for the internet and then they yeah. can't watch the live TV. It's just like, what are you so doing? Bizarre. Oh, so bizarre. Yeah. It's really bizarre. All right. Let's continue on to the bizarre, uh, bizarre a thon here. Cause there's still lots to talk about for sure. Yeah. Um, they announced this week that games can be played instantly during download. So if you it's buy, cool. if you buy a game online, it it's not instantly, there's probably a little bit of a bootstrap. Um, but yeah, those, those games you'll, you'll hit download. It'll queue up some of the game and then, yeah, you're getting right in and playing the game similar to what PlayStation four announced. So it's good yeah. to see Microsoft is doing that. Um, cool. All of the chat in the game is powered by Skype. Um, so you, if you're doing in-game chat, it's actually a Skype connection. Um, we know how good Skype has been for us, Jeff. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's a good thing, uh, it's to be honest. It's pretty rock solid, but I would have rather had the, you know, I would have rather had that service hosted through Microsoft and through their, through the Xbox because I've really never, ever had a problem unless my internet crapped out on me. Yeah. You know? And I mean, Microsoft owns Skype. It makes sense. They want to use their properties in all their products. But yeah, I mean, we're talking in the middle of this uh, show and you, your video feed went basically down to like three pixels and yeah. your audio cut all the way out. And yeah, I was used, at less than one frame a second. Too. And, and, and that's using Skype. And yeah. this is going to be built into everything. So, yeah, Skype is going to be built into the system. Um, Can you tell Microsoft owns Skype? I mean, uh, yeah, and, they certainly aren't shy about saying um, they own. I've heard a couple other interviews this week that said that um, you'll be able to have Skype video chats while playing a game or watching television. That's kind of cool. Um, even, it's also kind of stupid. Um, well, I don't know. If you're watching a movie together with friends, I, I've seen, I know a lot of people that do that right now by setting up their iPads and they watch a, a really bad movie on Netflix together and, and, and have fun because their friend moved away or family members moved away. Mm -hmm. Um, it might be stupid to you, Jeff, but there's a lot of people that would do that. So that's kind of cool. Um, Skype, obviously you can do video chats from anywhere because you're, you, you have the always on connect camera. So there you go. Um, and um, yeah, also, so don't masturbate in your living room anymore. Yeah, don't watch certain kinds of movies because the Xbox is always watching. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, it's so creepy, you know, when you think about it like that. You're yeah. like, it's like it's like having a security camera in your house all the time. Like, you, I feel like that you yeah, don't gotta, know where it's plugged into on the other end either. Yeah, you know, like I feel like every time I walk into the living room, I've got to turn my connect around so I can have a conversation or something. Or you know, just, it's like, un, just unplug it. Um, and they also said that um, in one one article I read today that uh, the, there's a probability that you'll be able to basically Skype while someone's playing a game and then take control of their game and see what they're doing. So similar to stuff that PlayStation talked about. So I guess Microsoft is doing a little bit of the Me Too thing, yeah. um, which makes sense. Skype. Um, yeah, more and more Skype. Um, what else? Um, it was announced this week that uh, developers can take advantage of the Microsoft Cloud for uh, CPU intensive processing. So if they're doing a lot of physics stuff, they can offload that processing um, through the cloud to a Microsoft server and then have the results delivered back. Kind of cool. Kind of cool, but 
that's going to add a lot of latency for things. So it's going to be, it's not going to be done for like a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, it's going to probably be done for like maybe setting up levels and things. Um, and yeah, improving loading times, I guess maybe, or um, uh, pre-buffering, uh, open mm, world games. I don't think so. Cause that type of stuff, it's loading from your, your internal hard drive. It already knows where that stuff is. It would be more for like an explosion would go off, but you'd pre-send the explosion details to Microsoft. They would compute where all the pieces go and then they'd send you back a file and then you could just play out those animations without having to simulate all that stuff. Um, kind of neat. I don't really see how that is a good thing, um, how it's going to be used that much just because of the time it's going to take for data to go to Microsoft and then come back. But um, it's it's kind of a neat, uh, a neat feature. But did um, they not say that they were doing that with the PS4 as well? Or am I, did I misread that? Um, I don't believe they said that. No, okay. no, I don't. I don't believe so. Um, developers apparently can make their games uh, playable offline, um, but none of them will. <laughs> oh, what else? Um, yeah, and then at this event that was about a new gaming system, they only showed off a <laughs> few games. They showed off Forza. They showed off a, a sizzle reel. I don't even think it was in game. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was all cinematic, which oh, is like really... I guess it was in game cinematics, but it wasn't actual gameplay. Oh, and it was actually pre rendered. Um, I thought they said this is in the in game engine. When they did the Forza stuff. I think what they, what they said was it's, it's the game engine making a pre-rendered cinematic. So like they use the resources, but like, here's the thing about, I mean, Forza, it's great. Yeah. I I, I love the series. When you, racing games are one of the greatest ways to show off your hardware and to not show us gameplay. I was like, fuck man, that's so stupid. You know, like you can't show us any, you show us like the close up of a tire for like eight seconds. Spinning. Yeah. smoking and it's um, like this is you know they, they go around like one corner and then a guy you know uses the draft of the other car to to get in front and win the race and i was like it was kind of exciting but i don't care you know like i want to see gameplay you know mm-hmm. exactly um ea came on on deck and announced a partnership with blah 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 ea exclusive sports, sports, for sports, fifa sports. i think is what they're what they're saying that you yeah know, FIFA like might that. now be xbox only yeah they should they, they said that which i find really unlikely because playstation is huge in europe where fifa yeah. is huge yeah. if that is really the case i'd be super surprised but well, yeah. we'll see what happens um they also showed off a sizzle reel of live video and pre-rendered stuff um that showed xbox um, madden and nba and it's like, okay, well, they announced some games, kind of, maybe. Um, and then yeah, right, they, sh- they showed, like, I mean, stuff that was probably made by an animator, you know? Yeah, like, well, th- that was not in-game. They didn't say that any of the EA stuff was in-game at all, where, where they did say, <clears throat> excuse me, that the Forza stuff was rendered with the in-game engine, but it might have just been maybe recorded and uh, yeah. made a sizzle reel out of it. Uh, and then they showed off, or at the end, uh, Caller Duty, <laughs> which is the yeah. Call, Call of Duty ghost. And the big reveal is like, oh my God, you have a dog with you. The reveal is they showed nothing. I mean, yeah. they, they, they showed the a very the choppy, cool. <laughs> yeah, but they showed a very choppy video. It's like, this is all rendered in engine and you're the first to experience it. And it's like, slow motion helicopter blades guys jumping from helicopters really choppy frame rate um, every call of duty trailer since the first call of duty for modern warfare exactly which doesn't make sense when you're trying to show off this new amazing engine and how good it looks it's like this is slow motion choppy kind of stuff it's like well why wouldn't you show like something live that is just like <laughs> oh my god i can't believe this is actually running on hardware it's funny because the stuff that they showed that's like really, uh, you know, spectacular <clears throat> about the engine, you know, they're like, they showed the faces and stuff like that. Yep. That's the same shit they showed at GDC. Yeah. The same stuff. So it's like the reveal was bullshit. You know, oh, there's a dog. Who gives a fuck? The dog's going to die in the game. That's absolutely certain. I mean, you wow. can't, they're going to make you feel bad about the dog and, you know, oh, there was a, there was a flood in one level and there's some logs that'll come down and kill you in a trap and multiplayer. They showed really nothing. It was stupid. Nothing about the story. You know, it was some stuff collapsing. It's, you know, just guns and fighting again. I'm going to buy it, but still it was dumb. It was, you know, they, they pump this thing up to be uh, like, Oh, it's going to be the event. It's going to, you know, and it's right at the end, you know, so everybody's waiting for it and it was bullshit. You know, it's like, this is the best you got. Wow. You're swearing a lot in this episode, Jeff, you must be really angry. 
it's just, it's just. I mean, it was really a waste of time. This entire thing was a waste of time. Yeah. Uh, not it, the it, show, it but I mean, watching the event. It it didn't show games, which is what gamers were watching this event for. If they yeah. if they announced it, if this was like, look at our general public, uh, everybody would want it in their living room device. They should have announced that this thing was happening on like the Today Show or Ellen, and then yeah. shown it there. Exactly. But no, they announced this on all the gaming websites, like coming and um. Yeah, that that wasn't it. So anyway, I was totally unimpressed with um with this thing. Um, PS4 did it better. PS4, PS4 did it better. definitely did it better. Um, a lot of people were really upset about it as well. Um, the whole used game stuff um, really hurt GameStop. Their shares fell seventeen point two percent since the Xbox One oh, announcement. That's insane. Yeah, they were that's at insane. um. Get out now if you they, have it. They were at thirty eight dollars and seventy six cents. Um just before the xbox event and they are now at 25 50 oh, god or, or no wait sorry no they're now that's that's wrong that's what they were in february so they had actually rebounded a lot okay. um, on monday june 4th uh, what that doesn't make sense uh that's way oh that's that's during e3 well what are they right now they are they are 32 11 so they're down 17% from before e th- the the Xbox One reveal. So oh, okay. So they've been they've been going down since then, yeah. Um well um, yeah, since it's the, like they dropped like I was watching real time and they were at $28. So they rebounded a little bit from there, but yeah, they're down from $39 essentially down to $32 since the reveal. So that's $7 on $39. That's a a pretty big percentage. Yeah. 17.2%, almost 20% they lost. Of That's the nuts. value of their market, um, just because of this this launch and and the uncertainty of used games, which is what mm-hmm. where GameStop makes all their money. So Corkadog asked a really <clears> good <throat> question in the chat room that I kind of want to ask you. Uh, he said, uh, "What is really the difference between Microsoft, the Xbox One, mm-hmm. PS4, and a PC?" Um, it's a really good question. There really is no difference hardware wise. Um, no. The PlayStation well, 4. Well, other than PC does technically have the advantage almost always. Well, yeah, but te- technically, like. Um, specs wise obviously the pc will have an advantage in, in next year because newer stuff will come out and the year after newer stuff will come out right. but essentially they're all big pcs what's really going to make the difference is um the hardware themselves what features they put into the hardware to make uh, game developers lives easier so things like the connect you'll always be able to talk to your games when you play uh, on the xbox you probably won't be able to do that on, on the PC because there's no guarantee that anybody's bought the $200 Connect thing for their system. So less game developers are going to want to add that support to their game if they do a port to the PC. Yep. Uh, on PlayStation 4, it has a PlayStation Eye, which has the same features as the Connect essentially. So maybe some cross-platform stuff where you say Xbox, blah, um, you'll be doing the similar thing on your PlayStation 4. Um, one of the thing I wanted to mention is um, I kind of want to put Xbox off into every single thing that I ever do. Like I'm just going to throw every five minutes Xbox off, Xbox off, Xbox off. Because if you're listening to this in, in your room and you're playing Xbox, it will actually turn your Xbox off. <laughs> there yeah, was exactly right. Yeah, there was. The, uh... I, I read a great article where someone was watching the stream in their living room on their Xbox, and when um, the pres- presenter in the presentation would say Xbox on or Xbox go home, their Xbox would try to do something and would get really confused, and the stream kept stopping because it was being confused by all the Xbox commands that were in the thing. So I just think that every single television show now has to have like Xbox off or go home, like go home would be great because yeah. everything I want to, I want to like, I want to make a new Xbox live ID where my name is EX dash box of. Um, so when people are, are playing me on Xbox live, they're like, damn it. Xbox of shot me. And by the time they finish saying shot me, their system is turned <laughs> off. That would be I, the best, the best way to troll everybody online. That'd be pretty fantastic. Yeah. I um, am. I am now yeah. known as X box of, on uh, on xbox live so the 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 event as a whole was for me was a big waste of time it was it was a monster letdown you know um and it was just it was just a jumble of things now in the media 
like Adam Sessler was talking about this a lot. Like, I guess there was a memo that was sent out to everybody who wasn't really important, but they said that like, listen, we're not really going to be focusing on games here. So they all knew going in that it wasn't going to be that. Right. And then, you know, the big fallback was, well, wait, to, wait till E3. And I'm like, why don't we just do that to begin with? You know, like what you like, there was a bunch of information here in this 60 minutes that were really going to like drag down E3 in some bizarre way. Cause those, those goddamn, uh, at, like the Xbox conference at E3 is going to be two and a half hours long. It's going to be totally indulgent. You know, there's going to be just an Xbox guy jacking himself off up there about how this is the greatest console in the world and you're going to want to buy one day one. So I don't understand why this was a necessary event to have. I because mean, it was everybody, really everybody pre-announced their device. So it seems to be the thing to do. Like the Wii U had the event before E3 that showed off some stuff. And then at E3, it's like, here we go. You've already seen the hardware. You've already seen the game pad. So now here's the hardware and here's all the games. Yeah. Um, PlayStation did it. So now Xbox is like, well, we got to We got to do it as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They were, I think they were probably pressured into doing it. And, you know, I think they, probably think now that like oh man we probably said some shit we shouldn't have until you know ps you know stony had had decided what they were going to do but it was it was boring there was a lot of stuff that pissed us off uh it's just it's very disappointing because i like i really like the xbox i think the xbox 360 is a great console it still is and um pre me watching this stream i was thinking i wonder if there's anything in here that's going to make me want to buy this thing day one mm -hmm. and now there isn't at all i no. mean if if i feel like it's made its mark i might buy it a year in and that would be early for me mm -hmm. i think i'd be buying a ps4 before i buy an xbox one because i i think the, the same thing and... the ps4 at least came out and said like right off the bat by the way, we we're making games. This is for gamers, and yep. and now they didn't really show all that many great games, mm -hmm. but they showed some games, and they showed that that the technology was there to make games great and make games better than they are, and they said the word game and games a lot in that press conference, you know. Yep. So, ah, oh, god damn it. Yeah, god damn it's it. uh, it's kind of depressing. Uh, yeah. as an Xbox fan, as you are, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Um. That that's got to be really hard to uh, to stomach. It was, it was, right. and and uh, like whatever, whatever, man. All there's right. there's um there, there's not really that big of an advantage to owning a console now at this point. If you uh if you're trying to figure out, well, maybe I should go with PC or yeah, you might as well just buy a a, a nice quiet PC and hook it up to your yeah. television via HDMI, and there you go. Yeah, get, Steam box it, man. Yeah. Or just get an any old PC that isn't a thousand dollars and do yeah. the same thing, yeah. but uh, but yeah, I mean that's that's essentially it. Like I'm I, I'm curious for E3. It, Microsoft has been on crazy 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 backtrack mode this whole week. Um, I feel sorry for Major Nelson because he's put out so many so many things like disputing rumors and it's like oh people are saying stuff that isn't true. It's like well yeah because you didn't say what we wanted to know yeah you didn't do anything um, I, don't, I don't feel bad for him at all i mean quite frankly it's his job and or maybe it, yeah. you know it's just what he's doing but they should have they should i mean it <clears throat> again this is something that you know probably isn't but seems to us like it's common sense you, you go in prepared if you don't really uh know what you're going to do with a certain service don't mention it at all because it really friggin hurts you here like yeah. it was really bad to mention that used games are going to be a, 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 like a new way, you know, you shouldn't have touched on it at all. Well, they, to be fair, they didn't touch on it during the event. Yeah. Not, not in the, the event. Yeah. The questions came up in meetings with PR folk after, and that's when it came up. Um, so they didn't talk about it cause they knew it was going to be an incendiary issue. And yeah, I think that's kind of what it was. Anyway, yeah. I think we spent enough time talking about the Xbox thing. Yeah. We're we, going to be talking about it for we, weeks to come too. We so. don't, we don't like it here. Um, not not impressed at all. There, we're only like 15 days away from E3. Yeah. Or, or 10 days away from E3. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, we're going to... And Xbox days, leads really? it off. No. It's, what, it's June 5th, I think. No, it's it's second week of June. Second week it's of June. Like okay, the, so like, yeah. So it's like three weeks away. Uh, Yeah, three weeks away. Because the and end Xbox, of May. And then, yeah. 
So it's yeah. it's three weeks away. We'll know about all the games. We'll know about everything. Hopefully they they figured out <laughs> what we want to know in that little time because it doesn't seem that they had an idea of what people really wanted from the system before then. So you remember after we 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 talked about the PS4 announcement, right? And we said, okay, the ball is in Sony's court right now. They did a really good job. There was some stuff that I thought was stupid, but it really didn't affect the way I felt about the console. You know, they didn't show it. They didn't talk about a price. You know, the controller was ugly to me. Um, the ball had the potential to be in Microsoft's court at this point. But now it's like, it, it, I mean, it's just, it just boggles the mind how poorly this went because now it seems like Sony has a few extra men on the field and nobody's going to call that penalty. You know, like they really have control here and going into E3, knowing that Microsoft is leading off in the press conferences, yep. they can then shape their presentation last minute to totally. completely win. Like, I mean, not win. And I hate, Console Wars is a stupid way to, to describe what's going on right now. Right, right. But they certainly can shift the momentum heavily in their favor. Well, yeah, Microsoft heavily. says this is coming out on November 11th for $500. Well, <laughs> the next day, Sony could say, well, this is coming out November 2nd, and it's only going to be $300. Yeah, and like, boom, done. And done. then Mike, and then Nintendo can say, we're already out, and we're dropping the price to $199. Suck it. And, yeah, we'll, we'll pay and you it. to take one off our hands. <laughs> I don't think it, they're in that that place. No, no. It's funny because um, in um, Amazon UK, with the after the Xbox announcement, Wii U sales went like crazy. They they raised by 220% on Amazon because enough people said, well, I'm waiting for the Xbox. They saw what it was. It's like, well, screw the Xbox. I'm getting the Wii U. I'm getting something that I can actually play games on, um, which was, I don't know, really kind of funny to me. All right, moving on. Let's get past this whole Xbox thing. We've been talking too long. I know you want to keep going, Jeff. No, but, that's okay. But, do you, do you want to just go into the into the question period? No, no I want to talk about to, these things. Yeah? That's okay. why I, I deleted some stuff already, but we're going to talk about this. Um, okay. One of the first big games uh, that has already been pre-announced um, that's going to be shown off at E3 is the new game from the makers of Dead Island. Uh, they're calling it Dying Light, and it is a first-person, free-running zombie game, um, <laughs> which is just absolutely crazy. It's like, it, it's like Mirror's Edge, where you are getting attacked by zombies and you have to outrun them or kill them. Um, I love Mirror's Edge. It it looks so good. I, I'm gonna post a link to the story, obviously in the show notes. You gotta go check. Sorry, you gotta you gotta go check out the screenshots because it yeah it, they look they look just stupid. Um, yeah, this and, obviously and is running on next gen hardware. It looks really really pretty. It looks really friggin' cool. It's uh, what it's slated for a release on 2014, um, but. It, yeah, it looks damn cool. I mean, they've just in the screenshots alone, and I know that those things are usually doctored a little bit to make them look better, but uh, there's a lot of fidelity here in mm -hmm. the way that the visuals look. I mean, just from just the few screenshots you get alone, you yep. get fantastic depth of field, some great detail. I mean, some really interesting lighting effects. And it looks like also a really fun environment to run around in, you know, like buildings and, 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 uh, you know, there always has to be like some sort of scaffolding set up. And, and mm -hmm. I was a big, big fan of Mirror's Edge. I beat that game like six times. Um, I wanted Mirror's Edge too for the longest time. So maybe this will be, you know, kind of a spiritual successor in a way. Sure. Exactly. I don't really know if Techland has the pedigree that they should to to maybe pull off a game like this but i mean we'll give them a chance yeah well ea kind of crapped the bed in a lot of for a lot of their franchises as well and mirror's yeah. edge hasn't gotten a sequel so i i no. wouldn't be i wouldn't feel much better if it was ea pr uh, publishing it as uh, yeah. either did, i guess that. i don't think mirror's edge did all that well and i think that's why yeah. you know it's sold pretty okay but not mm -hmm. great yep all right, moving on. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. Um, they announced their collector's editions. Um, the uh, in the U.S. collector's editions will only be available at GameStop, which is pretty stupid. But um, I guess they're getting a big money hat from GameStop. Um, there's going to be two collector's editions. There's the special edition, um, which is going to be available uh, for seventy nine ninety five. I want to say yeah, seventy nine yeah, seventy nine ninety nine. It comes with the game. It comes with uh, a map, <laughs> uh, which is really cool. A rollout map. Um, They've always came with maps like in the book, so I hope they still have that. If you just buy a regular edition, uh, I'm sure they will. Uh, a bunch of in game bonuses, a steel ca steel book case, which who cares about steel? I book? like the steel book cases. Well, yeah, you're crazy. You, you you like maps in an in an instruction manual. And not the big ones, and you like steelbook cases. 
you, well, no, I, I didn't say that I didn't like these maps. Oh. I'm just saying that if I bought the regular edition of the game, you're crazy, I would hope man. that there's still a map in there. You're crazy. You're crazy. It comes with um, outfits, tattoos, weapons, um, and some stunt plane trials, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and then there's the collector's edition, which is a stupidly priced $150, $149.99. It contains everything that is in the collector's or the special edition, but it has a uh, money bag. So a zip up, a lockable money bag that has the uh, GTA and Rockstar logos. Um, you have the ability to customize your characters um, in, in the uh, Grand Theft Auto Online. Um, there's an in-game vehicle. There's a gang property. Uh, it comes with a hat. Um, it also comes with a special vehicle. It comes with a blimp. And the blimp is only ever pilotable by people that have bought the collector's edition. So if you want to pilot a blimp, it's going to cost you 150 bucks. Yeah, spoiler alert. It controls like every other flying dirigible out there. I mean, it's like, just it, really it, slow. It's just really <laughs> slow. Really, really, <laughs> it's just, really slow. Who would ever um, pay oh, wait, sorry. for this? I, I misspoke. The blimp is available for anybody that gets any, the special edition or the collector's edition. I misread this earlier today. So okay. it is available for for both of them. Okay, well, if I get the special edition, which I was planning on anyway, um, to get the map, I I can I can too pilot a blimp, Jeff. I'm 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 happy now. I was sad, but now I'm happy. This made my day. <laughs> blimp back in. I'm just gonna buy the regular. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what else made my day? Uh, no, but I guess I'm about to find out. The Sony Vita is getting another game, Jeff. Oh, it's yay. not dead after all. Oh wait, it's Epic Mickey too. Shit. Wow. Why? Uh, yeah, it's, you actually wrote that in the show notes, which I found really funny. Like, what? Like, really? Why? Who? This game was horrible. Um, uh, I told a story. I think I, I think I told it on this show. Maybe it was, um, maybe it was on the Nintendo Pulse. Um, Epic Mickey Two was the first game that my son bought. He got money for Christmas and he wanted he wanted to buy a game. And I was like, oh, okay, well we can go look. There really isn't anything. And then he saw <coughs> Mickey Mouse on the cover. He's like, I want this. And I'm like. All right, it's on sale. It's forty dollars. It's not sixty. Are you sure you want to buy this? That's a lot of money. He's like, yeah, no, I want to buy it. I want to buy a game. This is the game I want. I was like, okay. So we picked it up, brought it home. It is the worst steaming pile of crap. <laughs> the camera behaves better on the Wii version than the Wii U version. For some reason, the more powerful system has a laggy camera. Uh, th the controls were terrible. And now you can experience the hell that is Epic Mickey Two on your Vita. Um, I don't, why, why, why is this coming out? I just let this die and it's yeah. coming out next month too, June 18th. So during E3 or right after E3, this game is coming out. Why? I, I asked them. I don't know. Why? Uh, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a stupid game. Uh, I think the original was, was pretty interesting for what mm -hmm. it tried to do, but it, it wasn't a great game. It was terrible, but it was interesting. The yep. sequel was just horrible. Yep. Uh, it's just, they're, 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 they're hurting for games really, I think is what, and, and really, I can't really complain about them putting a new game out just because I don't like it. The fact is, I think they're really trying to get games out, which is good, but it sucks that it's this game, you know, but <laughs> yeah, oh, man, what a, what a stupid, it is asinine is what it yeah. is. It is absolutely crazy. So yeah, good thing so, yeah. I have MLB the show. Epic Mickey. There you go. All right, moving on. Let's get into a question oh. period. We got an email in. I'm not even going to touch the MLB thing. Um, <laughs> so we got a, We got a question. It goes, hi, Lloyd and Jeff. I was wondering if you could recommend a nice four speed feedback wheel for the Xbox 360. I'm most interested in using one to play Forza. I also uh, would may also try it with need for speed shift uh, compatibility with Windows PCs and order the PS3 would be a plus. Also, having recently received a PS3 as a gift, I'm wondering if there are good Xbox 360 style controllers that you might recommend for the PS3. I'm having a hard time enjoying the controller for the PlayStation 3, and I really prefer the layout and heft of the Xbox 360 controller. Uh, wired or wireless would be okay. Thanks. Keep up the awesome work. And that's from Tadias. Um, so, yeah, if you're looking for a force feedback wheel, um, there there is one. Um, I own it, and I bought it for... Um, 
I, I bought it for a Forza and yeah. it works really, really well. And, and it's just the Microsoft force feedback wheel for the 360. Um, yeah, it's like 70 bucks, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. And it's, it comes with pedals as well, too, which is cool. It comes with pedals. Um, it does have force feedback. So if you're if you hit the um, kind of the, the bumpers on the side of the, the track when you're racing around, it'll actually start vibrating and pulling uh, your hands. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm just checking it on EB games. Um, for some reason I can't go there cause it keeps wanting to send me to EB games.ca. So I'll go to Amazon and yeah. Um, wow. They're really expensive on Amazon cause I guess they're being sold by someone that's reselling it. They're 200. Oh wait, this, oh, this is different. This is not the one I was looking at. Um, that was the wireless one that, from some other company. So yeah, I think they're they're still around not eighty dollars or so, and yeah. they're they're available. Um, Mad Cats almost also makes one. Um, that is the more professional one. That is two hundred fifty dollars, which is yeah. just so stupid. Anything um, made by by Thrustmaster is really good for like a gaming peripheral. They make really high end stuff. They've made a really great name them for themselves making uh, flight controls. So like you know you've got your you've got your foot pedals for your flaps at the back, and you know your your uh, your joysticks for for piloting planes. So. Those are really good, but you're also going to be paying like 150 to 200 dollars. There's really nothing at all wrong with the uh, <clears throat> Xbox 360 version, uh, other than the fact that if you don't have a good platform to play on, it's kind of weird and wonky. But uh, it's certainly it's not a bad piece of hardware. It's it's actually pretty damn good for the price. I don't really think you're he's getting into it to play like. You know, you don't want to spend three hundred dollars to play a sixty dollar game. You know, it just seems a little ridiculous unless you're really, really into it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think your I think your best choice is the Xbox three hundred and sixty version uh, mm -hmm. of the Force Feedback Wheel. Yeah, it works really well. Um, I take it out every once in a while to play Forza, um, and it it works really, really good. Mm -hmm. Um, you just need to put a brick or something in front of the pedals so you don't keep pushing them further and further away. Yeah, <laughs> and it's USB as well too, so it's pretty much compatible with everything. I don't know if it works on the PS three. I haven't tried it. I know it works on the PC. Um, yeah. I'd be surprised if it works on the PlayStation 3 because that would be very specific that you'd have yeah. to program for. But yeah, maybe it works for that as well. I know for sure on the PC and the 360 it works. Yes. All right. His second part of his question is, is there a... Uh, a 360 style controller for the PlayStation 3. Um, actually, there is. There's one called the um, a Pro Elite Wireless Controller. Um, I read an article. I think we had it on the show, or maybe it was a, a show earlier. Maybe it was on like uh, when we did XMB Cast here on the network. And it's cheap. They're about 50 bucks. Um, I just went to Amazon to look for it, and they're actually $30 on Amazon right now. And essentially, it's a 360 controller that works for your PlayStation 3. It looks just like a PlayStation 3 or a 360 controller, has the same sticks, same button layout. Um, it obviously doesn't have the same exact look. It's black. Um, it has little fins for a grip, um, which always are annoying to me but um but for a 30 dollar controller it's probably not that bad um it has the um a button layout that's a little bit more like the 360 so you don't have the two triggers so close together you have the r1 and l1 are a little bit up a little bit kind of like the bumpers on the 360 controller um looks really good i've heard some really good things about it i haven't used one myself um but i've i've heard some uh, really good things about it from people that want um they, they want to have the the concave um sticks and they don't yeah. want them at the bottom, they want kind of the offset placement, just like the 360 does. So yeah, there's also a, a, a couple of other options. Uh, one is if you go to a, like a Scuff Gaming, they make a controller that <clears throat> can be exactly the same thing as an Xbox 360 controller that'll work on the PS3, um, and they can com basically make it custom in any way you want. It can be a matte finish, a gloss finish. You can have convex thumbsticks or concave, you can choose that. You can choose the responsiveness of your triggers, which is really cool. But those are going to cost you about 80 to $120, depending on how you know custom it is. Another option is if you already have a wired Xbox 360 controller, is you can buy an adapter. And HDE sells adapters on Amazon for about $16. And all you do is you plug in the adapter, it's USB, it goes into your PS3, and then you plug in your wired Xbox controller into the bottom of the adapter, and it's got all these little switches, so triangle becomes y and x because or and square becomes x and so on and so forth yeah and it just basically remaps all the buttons so if you have a controller 
for your Xbox already, that's a really good route to go. And uh, I mean, it's super cheap. It's like 16 bucks. You know, it probably costs 20 to get it to your house. Yeah. I, I've heard some really bad things about those adapters. Um, they They're work, a little wonky. Yeah. Um, where there's latency issues that are um, thrown into it, um, stuck buttons, things like that. So your mileage will will definitely vary. But um, but yeah, there's a lot of things that exist. So uh, troll around the internets and have a peek at the ones that we uh, recommended for you. Awesome. All right. Well, that's going to about do it for episode number 32 of the bonus stage. Uh, thanks, Jeff, for joining me yet again. Always good to be here. Ranty, ranty, McRantying on the uh, Xbox. That was uh, that was a lot of fun. Well, I mean, yeah, it's just it's so hard not to get mad at it. You know, it's mm. just and it's something like I said, we're going to be talking about it for the next week, <clears throat> two weeks up until the thing launches. We're going to be talking it, up for like six months. And even after launch, we're still going to be bitching <laughs> yeah. about it because they're they're really screwing. screwing well, up. the thing is, like, they're, they're really in a position now where if this console isn't great right out of the box, I mean, they've, they've totally lost me as a customer, you know? I mean, it really has to blow my friggin' mind for me to ever want to even try to spend money on it. If PlayStation came out and they were like, listen, our console's going to be $100 less than Microsoft, I'd probably buy a PS4 at launch just because. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting time. E3, E3 is going to be even more interesting now. Which I'm sure when Trevor finished. hears me say that, he is going to love. He's going to flip get, his crap. He's going to, it's going to be on Twitter, right? Oh, Jeff's going to buy a PS4 at launch. All it's got to do is I'm going to hold you to it. I'm going to hold you to it. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear it right now. All right. Uh, we want to hear from you guys, just like Tadias. Um, we want to get an email or a voicemail from you. Head on over to vgpodcast.com. Let us know what you think. Click contact us at the top of the page or send us an email directly at vgpodcast at gmail.com. Call our voicemail line at 505 VG Podcasts. We're available for subscription on iTunes. Uh, just go and subscribe. You'll get the podcast delivered to you each and every week. We're also on Stitcher Radio. All of the network shows um, that are on VG Podcast Network, The Touch of Gaming for iOS, Nintendo Pulse for Nintendo, and um, Full and Indie which is a show that we put out every two weeks or so about independent game development. Um, That's all available up in iTunes. So do a search for VG Podcasts or do a search for each of those shows and you can subscribe to those ones as well. Uh, As I said, you can call our voicemail line, which is area code 505-VG-PODCASTS. I'm on Twitter at at DASME. Jeff is at at Jeff A. Ward. And uh, yeah, it's going to do it for this week. So for Jeff, um, enjoy your week, guys. And uh, keep thinking about your uh, your Microsoft rants um, and, and, and send them in. We, we'd love to read oh, your Microsoft yeah, I'd rants. Lo- I'd love to read them. That would be show. a lot of fun. Yeah, rant in an email. Send them in or call them in. Yeah. And a rant in an email. Send them in and we will talk about them in, in the next episode. That should be yeah. pretty, pretty epic. That All right, guys. Awesome. Take it easy. We'll talk to you in a week's time. See ya. Let's get started.